What's happening, weirdos? This is uh, the return of Nate Craig. Nate Craig is a hilarious and wonderful man, and I enjoy chatting with him every time I get the chance. I'm so glad to share this conversation with you. He has a special live at the Green Mill. It's available free on YouTube right now, so check that out. I enjoyed every moment of it live at the Green Mill. And if you'd like to see me, me. <laughs> Enough about Nate. No, we'll get to the conversation with Nate real quick. I do want to plug September 2nd is my next Largo show. Go to Largo-LA.com. Those are always the highlight of my month. We're going to have some really great guests this month as well. And I'm doing all this new material. Also, you can see me. Denver sold out. Thank you to everybody that got tickets to Denver. They tell me that St. Louis is sort of dragging. <laughs> so if you know 500 people in St. Louis... Tell them September 7th, 8th, and 9th, I'll be at Helium Comedy Club in St. Louis. You can get tickets at PeteHolmes.com. After that is Raleigh, North Carolina, and then Salt Lake City, Utah. These are going to be great shows. Hope you can be there. Check it out. I'm so happy with the new material. And this is kind of your last chance to see me do some of the old material, which won't be old to you, uh, that'll be on the special on Netflix. It'll be out at the end of October. Uh, I also want to mention that we only do ads for things that I actually use and actually love. And the perfect jean is the perfect example. The perfect jean is essentially the only pair of pants I wear because they have so many cuts and colors and their fabric is incredible, stretchy, comfortable, but it looks good enough to wear on my Netflix special. I'm wearing perfect jeans. I wear them to movie premieres, fancy Hollywood gatherings. They look designer. They feel designer. They're made with really, really high-end sewing techniques, quality, craftsmanship. But here's the best thing. 2% spandex, 2.5% rayon for a sneaky amount of extra comfort that no one needs to know about so your man parts aren't crushed. That's right. These jeans stretch, but no one needs to know. I love a soft pant. I don't know why we haven't all switched over to the perfect jean. I literally have seven or eight pairs of them. I have them in khaki. I have them in dark blue. I have them in black. I have them in athletic. I have them in slim. They're awesome. You got to try them out. Maximum durability. I never have to replace them. They last for light years. Well, I can't say light years. They last a really, really long time. In my personal experience, they are the most durable jeans I've ever owned and the most comfortable and the best looking jeans I've ever owned. And they're so comfortable. They're like PJ pants. You could sleep in them. Perfect for road trips. Perfect for being on stage. Perfect for if you just want to do squats in the middle of the day. And best of all, they're not khakis khakis wear perfect jean khakis which are some of my favorite ones their jeans colored like khakis and they spare your nuts the perfect jean for the perfectly imperfect men 20 percent off when you use code weirdo at checkout liberate your lower limbs with the one and only perfect jean whether you're working with lemons or lentils a three-leaf clover or a big old honk and eggplant the perfect jean has you covered take a peek at www.theperfectgene.nyc that's the perfect j-e-a-n.nyc use code weirdo for 20% off at checkout, support your body, look good, feel good, and support the show. It means a lot. All right, everybody, hope to see you in St. Louis, please, <laughs> and hope to see you in Utah and North Carolina after that, and hope to see you at Largo as well on September 2nd. In the meantime, enjoy Nate Craig, and be sure to check out Live at the Green Mill, available on YouTube now. Get into it. Yeah, you your can. Sponsor? You drink it, baby. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes. Give it a good shake. Magic mind. Give, you, it, give it a good shake. Cult leader. I am a cult leader. <laughs> but all all cult... right, here we go. What's this going to do to oh me? Oh, my. We call it the reckoning. You didn't shake it enough. There's still jizz on the bottom. I shook it. Oh, there is jizz. <laughs> There's so much jizz down there. You got a good amount, but I could tell Hold how up, much that, you that's, shook it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a, now this is another sponsor, this Cucumber the, Lime. This is the jizz washer. Nirvana water. Cucumber wine, a.k.a. jizz It's going to taste a little strange now. We're mixing Pete's picks. Has anybody ever done this before? No, and I don't know if I even recommend it. Well. Just know that that's flavored because some guests have drank that and been like, whoa. Spit yeah. take? And I did not a true spitty. Jizz But I'll wash. say this. So when I did hot ones... I wanted to bail. Yeah. And Obviously. I just was having 
<laughs> no. I will say this is before Hot Ones became not like. Not a bad combo. Not a bad combo. Magic Mind. NABC. And Jizz Wash. Married up. NABC. Not a bad combo. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. you too, None buddy. of these stories need to be told. No. All I'm going to say is I wanted to bail on Hot Ones. I yeah. was doing too much press. It was during HBO's Crashers. And I just was like, I just get me out of it. And they were like, I think you should do it. And I'm just, sometimes I'm really grateful for that voice that will push me into that direction mm -hmm. away from my own bailiness. Because mm -hmm. I did it and it was super fun. And then that show is super, super popular. And I'm kind of like, I almost walked away from that. That was dumb. Steph Curry just did Hot Ones. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's massive. Old Holmesy couldn't do Hot Ones now. No. <laughs> Old Holmesy slipped in. Yeah. <laughs> Old Holmesy slipped in when the getting was good. Before it was Matt Damon getting a walk on from Al Pacino, being like, "Who's eating wings?" You know, just like <laughs> now it's like intense. <laughs> they have like SNL style walk on. What's it gonna take for y'all to name a wing after me? <laughs> I bet he'd do it. Anyway, I'm so happy to see you. You too, bud. It's been face to face. What? FTF. Couple years. FTF. FTF. It's been PP. Pretty pre-pandemic. Oh, pre-pan. Yeah, pre-pan. I think pre-plan. Maybe I've seen you since then. It's been a the the re, since the since the shutdown ended. It's been a real blur of like, what are we what are we doing? How and how how how, how hard are we pressing to see folks? See folks. You get out there. You know, like it's, it's see folks. It's been a I lot love more. Your, I love your voice. It's been. A lot I do. <laughs> I I should say this up top. I ripped through your whole special. And oh. I love it. Oh, dude. It's thank a you, buddy. real work of art. Thank you, dude. It's really, really good. Mm. And it's really fresh. It's not like Nate Craig did a special that happened to be when the pandemic was ending or whatever, whenever it was released. It's all this stuff that was clearly written about what we had all just been through. Oh, yeah. I was scrapping bits. No, that's uh, not what I'm saying. No, no, no. I'm saying like you didn't go like, Oh, the pandemic's crazy. Yeah. So's hot mustard and like move into your hot mustard <laughs> no. chunk. Yeah, yeah. You did this thing that's very timely, very topical, very fearless. And like you have, I thought about this. It's weird that I thought about this compliment, but you reminded me of what I love about Chicago comedians in particular. You go silly, you get verbose, you use a lot of funny language, toot sweet comes to mind i did not a spoiler dude sweet um, and, and you play but there's a theme you're doing like your special does what i'm gonna sound like an old person but like not a lot of people are doing anymore which is like there's like themes and there's reprieves it's musical it comes back it's on a tone and your voice is not like anyone else's voice and you're having fun and you're calm very hard to do on a special taping very hard to do. So very hard to do. It's hard to do. <laughs> you, you love calm. You got to stay calm. <laughs> Nate's up there. He's excited to do the bits. <laughs> Two bits becomes a oh, chunk. Two god. chunk becomes a set. Oh my god! I finally. I, <laughs> anyway, it's I fantastic. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. But to keep it current, I did do it. There is crowd work in there for the kids. What do you mean? Uh, just that's I'm, what they just, like. Well, I was just trying in my head when you were like this, that. People don't do anymore, you know. And there's so much stand up that like you know. I just meant there's less I appreciation for the the craftsmanship. People are crafting different kinds of the stuff. The arc of the 50, 60 minutes. And yeah, I, yeah. it I, just reminds me of uh, you know a lot of scandalized comedians like Bill Cosby, <laughs> <laughs> Louis. I care about that shit. Yeah. The the Herald approach to like a, a yeah. you know like but a, it's effortless. You're doing it so cool. You look really cool. Meaning, I just appreciate how calm you were. It's not a it's not a punched up, jacked up. Like you're kind of doing it real. It's very and that's very you, Chicago buddy. to me. But like you don't bring up. This is my favorite compliment. It's what I'm going for. You don't bring up a premise without taking it somewhere that was worth bothering us with trying to think of what glamping is or whatever. The small you know what I mean? shit, yeah, Like yeah. you bring up a it's topic. more broad, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I mean like I find that a lot of times the thing that I don't like about comedians is they bring up a topic and then they don't take you anywhere and then you're like, well, what was all that mental effort? <laughs> Literally, yeah. I, I feel exhausted by it. Yeah. That you made me imagine you in your kitchen with an open robe and you're getting milk and then you're like, and now I'm in Montana getting a haircut and I'm like, 
You didn't what change. You, you didn't change and you didn't finish. You didn't change. Yeah, what? Go back to the kitchen. What was the point? There was something in the if kitchen. If I need meandering bullshit, yeah. I have I my have life. Me, I can do I that have my myself. Life. Yes, I, I can, can call a family I member. I can forget my own thoughts. Call Thank an old much. friend. I don't call wanna... the funny friend in high school. He's got lots of stories like that. I got a whole list of people who can make me forget where we're at in the That's conversation. Right. And bring it nowhere yeah, and yeah. pay it off never. Yeah. And and like you do an interesting, sorry for all these compliments, but Dude, keep enjoy. going. It's Don't like you stop. do something that That's what I I'm don't, here for. There, when I say reprieve, you know, like it's like paying homage to where we were. Yeah. Meaning it's not a callback. You're not just going like, Mm, that's why we call him Big Dick McGee. And like <laughs> 10 minutes earlier, you did this forced bit about Big Dick McGee just to pay it back. You're not doing that. The The set is listening to itself. So of course, organically, like that would come back and this would come back and this would come back. Well, really clearly well I made the special for you, Pete. I really appreciate it all. Well, how long has it been out? Uh, we just... It dropped uh, what June first or li- right after Memorial Day, so right about there. And it's I mean, but we shot it, we shot it last year. You're June still watching Nate Craig special after Memorial Day, dude, dude. It's, it's Faux pas, big, big time, big time, big time. Don't, don't mention that to anybody. Don't tell people you're watching it. It's great special. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great special. It's you gotta so watch fun. it. Nate's up there. He's defending the whites. It's so He's fun. defending us. <laughs> <laughs> we love Nate and we love the whites. We love Nate and we love his take on the whites. <laughs> <laughs> we love talking about the whites. They deserve to be talked about. I did enjoy that you mentioned the whites, but you it is. Uh, and let's stop talking about it. But like it is fearless, and you do have takes, and there's moments. I could see why Bill Burr produced it. There's like a quality to it that's unafraid and fun that reminds me of Neil Brennan's. Like, I'm going to bring up a thing and I'm going to say something, not, not yeah. to just be crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, I think, you know, and thank you and uh, not to agree with you 100% <laughs> about yeah. my own work. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, go ahead. But like, we mentioned Neil and like, and like, that is such a great special. And there are- Yeah, Blocks is one of those ones where you're like, like, I can't wait to hear what did he's you say. Watch, Oh my God, did you watch um, um, Dion Cole's new, latest special? No. He talks about his mom passing away and stuff. And it's like, after like a full hour of like incredible jokes. And it's like, yeah, nowadays like, I, I don't, it's it's either or. You're either doing like, you know, absolutely instantly, you know, destroy this message after watching kind of yeah. cr- bullshit crowd work. Right. Yeah. Or you're watching somebody who's like been doing it long enough to be like, well, I gotta, I, this thought's gotta go somewhere. Yeah. Or I'm, or I'm no well, longer. How old are you now? 46. See, I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's it. I think yeah. Dion's in his 40s. Yeah. Neil's in his 40s. You're yeah. in his 40s. Not to, not to say everybody gets better in their 40s but i think and not everybody who's good is in their 40s but i'm saying for me what you just said now i do stand up and i'm building to something that i really want to say and mm-hmm. and you really know yourself and you have something that you want to communicate there's an urgency to it and i, I felt that here i love it that yeah. means everything thank you pete yeah Peace. dude i as as uh i've uh i've been having more fun period you know st- you, we've known each other since damn near the beginning isn't that wild um and it feels like a lot of times some of those memories feel like yesterday, but th- you know, for me, I, it was stand ups hard. And I'm a little slow, so like it's been a lot more fun <laughs> recently. Like, you know, stand up is hard. It's very hard, dude. It's not easy at all. And but it's also- immense. One of the great things about it is the not stopping of it is also. I, I am going to say there's like a passive income to stand up, meaning like just keep you accumulate doing it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's, keep watching right, it. Right. It's, it's Keep your head down a little it's bit. Of, it's a bit exponential. and You'll and, get better. Right. It and, just grows on itself yeah, without effort. Yeah. And, and through time. And uh, and with effort. Yeah, for sure. A lot yeah, of effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, there's so many distractions doing stand up comedy. What like, do you mean? J- well, just the physical distraction of like actually getting up in a room. And having to listen to every corner of the room, every audience member, you're kind of doing it subconsciously while you're also, you know, peeling through this idea that's unfinished. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I, I tend to like kind of loosely write bits so that I can kind of get out of my own. I've always yeah. said my brain is way smarter than I am. So yeah. if I could just kind of get into the thought and then have my brain kind of dig its way out with the least amount of syllables, it'll do that on its own. Yeah. Interesting. And like that pays off sometimes. Yeah. Oftentimes it does not pay off. Yeah. And so then you're in the middle of that scenario where you're like trying to communicate to all, you know, all these different elements. Uh, uh, but going back to what you just said, yeah. cause I'm with you. 
it is, there's a, it's difficult to listen to so many people. And I'm not surprised to hear that you feel that way. I feel that way. It's like locking on and merging with an audience mm -hmm. is, is more taxing than it seems. And that's why it can be so detrimental and painful when it goes poorly is because yeah. you were like, I was locking, it's like two ships trying yeah, to yeah. refuel in outer space. And it's like, and then they break it and one of them explodes. Right. That's what it feels like to bomb. Yeah. But when you connect, but it, it takes a lot of energy it's in the same way that like parties and dinner parties can be uncomfortable for me is because I, there's just a lot of attention being paid. Could you and care? I get overwhelmed because I care. Could you care? You want to yeah. listen? Do you want to, you want to, you want people to know that, that they're, they're landing because it, it matters. Because, because they do, it is, and it makes the conversation more substantive when that happens. And that's just a more interesting <laughs> encounter as yeah. a human being. And it's an underrated skill for a comic, somebody who can listen to the room. I think a lot of us, <laughs> I'm going to say, maybe this is shitty. I think a lot of us just aren't doing it. Um, I don't think, let me put it this way. Let me put it more gently and more honestly too. I just think there's a, there's a, you know, a spectrum of how sensitive comedians are. And I tend to like the more sensitive ones, the ones that are like really hearing the laugh change color just a little bit, or they pull away just a little bit. It's really hard for them. It's it, they're they're an exposed nerve. Marin comes to mind. I would even say Burr is that way. Like these guys that seem like jackhammers. Yeah. I see little sweeties. I see little like guys that really. <laughs> I was just trying to do a bit about this where I was like, anger is sadness in disguise. And I would, oh, for sure. So anger, Weeping. anger is the colorful candy shell yes. on the M&M of sadness. Uh -huh. I was like, and isn't it funny that M&M <laughs> is the best example of this? He's so sad that his dad left. He's so sad that his mom was an addict. But what comes out <laughs> is like, grab my balls, bitch. Grab my balls. Yo, can eat my ass. <laughs> and, how, and I'm not trying to be funny, but like how uh -huh. sad in all of us, when we're up there ranting, there's a sadness there. And, I, and those tend to be the guys that I like and the women that I like. Those tend to be the comics that are really tuned in to the crowd with the same intensity that they tuned in to their alcoholic parents' dinner table. Yeah, you know they're, what I mean. They're, 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 their survival is tied to it. Yeah, there's betrayal there. There's disappointment there. And what yeah. they want more than anything is for somebody in the in the room to understand them. That's yeah. exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But you only get it. I just came back from visiting my folks and my friend who's, uh, you can take this however you want. I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I'm afraid you'll judge me, but she's intuitive. She's a psychic person. And she's like, I could tell you had just seen your parents and that every play, everything you heard, you were playing it 10, mile, 10 minutes down the line just to see how it could hurt you and get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've never felt more seen in my life because <laughs> that's what I'm doing with my folks. I'm like, what is that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm going to juggle these balls for dad. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not my dad's balls, but I'm going to juggle these balls <laughs> for dad. Sure. And, and I'm Aren't gonna... we all juggling our dad's balls? You know, I love your bit about your, the balls. That was fantastic. Oh, my grand. Yeah. That's, uh, what is it? Uh, every man ev is driving a Honda. Oh, Ford. most men are balls are a Ferrari and most men are just a Honda Accord and we yeah. are burning through tires our whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you just to see what you think of this? Like to put it a quarter in your jukebox. I go, I've done a lot of drugs. I list all the drugs I've done. I've never done on stage. And I go, you know what the craziest drug I've done is? Testosterone. Uh -huh. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. Burning with rage. I'm not even trying to be funny. Look to our porn. Yeah. Look to the porn. I know there are women that might enjoy that porn, but the porn that Val has told me that she wants soft focus. <laughs> They're like showering in milk and glit and drying each other off. Changing there's costumes. A lot of, yeah, there's a lot of kissing. <laughs> there's no. Look at the horror that it that is to me testosterone left unchecked. Testosterone doesn't have a wardrobe department. No, <laughs> no, it does not. It starts it filming not. the moment the actors it, it, arrive, it, and it's, it's a lot of improv. Yeah, it's, it's fucking terrible. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. We are shit faced on our own balls. That's what you said, and mm -hmm. I love that line. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought that was fantastic. Thank you. Okay, buddy. what were you saying? You were saying something else. We're, we're, um, sadness being anger is sadness in disguise. Listening comics, how tiring it can be. Are the things that get in the way of stand up. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, just distractions. Well, just to make the observation, just to. Uh, I've said it, listening to the crowd is an underrated skill, and it is. And I, the comics I love, um, for you know a lot of different reasons, but but when I see somebody who listens really well, and that the best I've ever seen is Rory Scovel. I I'm yeah. always um, every time I watch him, I'm like he makes mention 
And this can be an out for some comics to like be like, you know, uh, why you know what why did it get so quiet in the room or then everybody yeah. laughs at how quiet it got, yeah. you know, but, but when I watch Roy, I don't see that at all. I see him like actually Me too. knowing why a joke landed the way it landed in the room, in the back, differently back there than it did over here. Yeah. And like, that's oh, just I, so I detailed where he goes, it sounds like there's a lot of church goers here. And yeah. it was just like, cause Perfect. he was making fun of church and yeah. he goes, it sounds like there's a lot of church goers here. And I was like, that's not to flatter myself, but I think Rory and I are like, comedy brothers yeah. you know what i mean i, I said it's to good, him it's a good brother to have it is he well he's my favorite comic really? which which is really saying something is that i meaning i must love myself i do yeah when i watch my own comedy i'm like this is what i've been looking for and that and that's how i hope everybody feels about their yeah. own comedy yeah but when i watch rory i'm like fuck could have done that you know who my comedy brother is who bell burr Belly B. I'm is it true? No. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, oh that's hilarious. I'm You're just, picking like one of the greats. I'm trying to go off. I'm trying to fucking. That's my doppelganger. Yeah. My, you know who my doppelganger is? I'm trying to think of somebody better. <laughs> it's a shame that, uh, I mean, everything about what happened with Louis is a shame. And one, one of the small lowercase shames is how fucking great he is. How funny he is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, what I'm saying is I was just about to be like, I, my, my twin is Louis C.K. <laughs> Scandal noted. Uh huh. However, we feel about that. I'm like, as a stand up, I'm like, geez, I'm crow. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about someone that brings something up and doesn't stop until it's fucking drained yeah. dry. Yeah. His joke about uh, how Christianity won because we count the years one year since his death, <laughs> two years since his death. Man. It's one of the greatest. Well, he's bits. still working. No, I know. Well, that's that's um. You can still Joe Mandy's bit. No one's been canceled. Nobody's been canceled. Because no one's been canceled. Yeah. And I was like, that's a great premise. It's a, it's kind of tricky, obviously, but yeah. Well, like, isn't isn't fucking isn't fucking Huxtable about to go back on tour? Not Theo. You mean Cliff? <laughs> Cliff <laughs> Clifford. He's Malcolm Cliff. Jamal Warner. He's Clifford doing yes. around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. I just mean physically. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, is he? Are they going to lower him on one of those helicopter rescue know. orange rafts? He does know. five, and then they just airlift him to the hospital. He's dead. He's like he's, he's a dead person. He looks like he drank from the wrong goblet he, yeah, in he, the in the Last Crusade. He looks like Diane he, Feinstein. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but he just the poorly. senator from <laughs> the senator from oh she from San Francisco. Of yeah. course, Diane Feinstein. Of course, I know the senator <laughs> who sits in the Senate. <laughs> every Man. state Woo. gets two, two of them. Two. Yes. And and Diane is one, is one of, of them, them for from California. California. It's one of our senators. senators. Yes. Are you kidding me? Of course, I know. You know Schwarzenegger no. and Diane yep. Feinstein yep. Yep. <laughs> and Rachel Feinstein. Adam Schiff and Diane Feinstein. But yes, Adam Schiff and. Wait, is he's a representative? Who's Padilla. it? Oh, thank Alex you very much. Alex Padilla. I hear that. I just hear that in my car radio when I'm listening I knew it was to Alex AM Padilla. Radio. Of course, I knew the just other senator. Staying on top, top of, of it. Everything. Yeah, Alex Padilla. Yeah, he's yeah. Funky Cold Padilla, they call they him. They call him. Because <laughs> you slip it. Bam, bam, bam. They, of pl they play Cosby, it when he walks on. Wasn't to the Funky floor. Cold Medina kind of about Mickey's, like slipping people? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a clear rape. Yeah, it's a rape That's song. a rape jam. It's not just rape Baby, jams. It's Cold Outside. <laughs> Welcome back to Just Rape Jams. That was for the 50th time today, Baby, It's Cold Funky Outside. Cold, and now just to mix it up, every 50th time, we do play Funky Cold Medina. Uh, who is tuning uh, in? House remix, Funky Cold Outside Medina. <laughs> you could play 50 versions of Baby, It's Cold Outside. Ugh. And then mix it up with, there's only, nobody remixed Funky, Funky Cold, Cold Medina. Medina. Sure no. they did. You think so? It's out there. It you exists. think so? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was gonna. I just watched the movie coming up um, from DJ Rape, Funky Cole Medina. <laughs> he just names himself that. <laughs> wow, how, how appropriate because no one likes it. <laughs> Nobody likes it. He uh, in the movie. Remember when you called me Rape? You had a lot of fun with that nickname. That was, that was what I just called you. That yeah, you just called me Rape, Craig. Well, that, you didn't call me. That. <laughs> I don't think I Bur made that. Burns up. made it up. Yeah, because I, I dry humped him in Vegas, and then that was one that it was a it was a pre Me Too nickname that. That I, I was happy to lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, things have changed. 
I was I didn't know you got uh, married, which makes me feel like oh, a yeah. real piece of shit. That's okay. But I bud. found out from your comedy special. Yes. And if there's any indication that we're just two pirates that just docked briefly together yeah. here at this port. Docking. <laughs> that's what we've that's our we've docked thing our to wieners today. together. But you got married. When did you get married? Right before the pandemic. Is it the girl? Because the first time you did, you made it weird. Yeah. The whole thing was about oh, the my one that got away. Yeah, I know. Um, no, uh, new girl. <laughs> we've, we've, the whole episode was We've moved on. The one you knew you loved so true had gotten away. Moved on. Not her. Ship it. Ship it? Ship, Ship it. it with someone else. Ship it with somebody else. So that girl has been shipped with someone else. She, yes. The, uh, still great friends. Oh. But, uh. Was she at the wedding? No, 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 no. Oh. Um, but <laughs> not, not great friends then. <laughs> great friends. Not great friends. But like the kind of thing you gotta yeah, sever. Don't, don't great friends come to the wedding? To your great friends, you know, great friends. We lost a lot of blood. You know, like we 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 had to uh we you know, we got uh we're in different markets now. <laughs> I understand. Um different but leagues. Different leagues, You're different national, markets. She's American. She, she I know that. Yeah, we're it's the NFC AFC situation. We've gone UFC AMC. But um no, I mean I met I've never been happier, dude. Yeah. Never been happier. No, you seem balanced. Yeah. PH I feel balanced. I feel pH balanced. I feel um Where did you meet? We met uh, if this it's is an a, app, you can just turn your hat. No, 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 around old school. Old school. Just turn your hat around, <laughs> old then turn it back. Old and school, I dude. Oh, okay, old school. Yoga. In the wild. Yoga class. Yoga. Real creep status. Oh, I mean, it. You don't meet someone at yoga. Happy ending. You do. You do. Yeah, though. that's the joke in my act. I met my wife at yoga after yo know, outside of. I followed her out of yoga. That's right. the gag. And then, which it's exactly true. But then she had a boyfriend at the time and I was like, none of that. And then I invited her and her ex to uh, my 4th of July party and she showed up. And Your famous 4th like, of July party. My 4th of July. You've been there. You both have been there. Uh, so that yeah. was, and then she was like, she, she showed up. She came with her boyfriend. She came, she did not have a boyfriend anymore. <gasps> and she came with her friends. Do you think she broke up with him unconsciously but so she could be free for old Nady Craig? I like to think so. Is this real? I bet. Uh, yes, I think that's actually the case. Yeah. I think they were just at the end, but then they did have a trip planned to. Um, they were Chivasana. He's a chef, and he's still a. <laughs> they were they, relationally. They were about to hit. Chivasana. They had to dock up a few more times. You know how it is. You gotta. <laughs> and you were like, you gotta undock. There's there's infrastructure there. You gotta you gotta yeah. unbolt. No, that's right. You gotta move the. Give it a little time. Zzz, 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 there's lifts and. <laughs> <laughs> There's hydraulics involved. Yeah. And then this is all, these are all sloppy metaphors. But um, yeah, and then I invited her over. I said, I'm gonna, the 5th of July was always me cleaning up this mess of puke and, and decorations. And yeah. I said, come over and let's, you know, uh, make hamburgers and well, drink you brought wine. You invited her to come back. First date, 5th. July 5th. That's our anniversary. July so 5th. you met again. Yoga. Yoga. Hey, Six nice months to later. Meet you. Hey, nice to How'd meet you. How'd you get in touch with her? I said, what she, I said, what's your name? She told me your name. I found her on la, on Facebook. Oh, Facebook. I mean, we're old school. It's been a while. Been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Shuffled uh, through the mom memes and found her. And, uh, and then, and her, at the time, her boyfriend was in her profile picture. So I... Uh. Back That's serious. Way the f off. Yeah, and um, and totally was uh, resp and I I made it. I invited them both, and then and then that was it. First date, and then but they did have a trip planned to Italy for that fall. So I was like, well, and then we took our time, and then eventually it worked out. Wait, they took that trip. They took that trip, and and she was like, we're not, I'm not, and I was like, yeah, cool, whatever. And then like, you know, we were just kind of not dating for a while, but then we eventually. We got date. We were dating, and then I got a job, and I was, you know, it was like I was shooting that show. I got a to shoot a show for Netflix, and then like I was in New York for like three months, and I was just like, we had just started, we had made it official. Then I got the job, and I was in New York, and I was like, I'm so happy that I got this awesome woman in my life, and I was like, I knew I would, I had like what a new Nate, dude, new Nate. Dude. See, old Nate would be like. I just started damn dating it. someone now in New York. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a piece of new shit. New Nate. New Nate. Well, new, new Nate. Old Nate was, I don't think old Nate was Old Nate a was just a little shit. drunk on his nuts, you know, like. Yeah, he was know, a Honda Accord. Honda Accord. Up. It's like when you hit the nitrous button in spoiler, some racing games. Spoiler alert, Nate. Like you had a spoiler? Yeah. And on my it Honda was alerting Accord. to people. <laughs> 
<laughs> it alerted people. <laughs> I don't know if that worked. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, that worked. I think that worked. So you were filming something in New York, staying long dist. Yep. And then... And just like calling her and being like, you know, fucking Gabriel Byrne today. <laughs> like, it was like... Wow. Well, yeah, it was great. And like, she's... And the, she's not in the biz. She's not in the biz. She, at the time, nurse. she was an ICU nurse. Now she's in med school. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. Yeah. Do a lot of nurses? Yeah, I guess. Is that like a... I think it's a thing. A, a thing? lot of them become MPs and are Which, like... Military police? Nurse practitioners. Wait, MP doesn't stand for nurse practitioner. MP. Practic uh, sorry. Oh, I mumbled. NP. I mumbled. No, you didn't. My mind sauce hasn't kicked in yet. I'm it's it's magic kicked mind. in. It's, you drank it backwards, so it's making you stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he put it in his butt. Um, if you do pour magic mind up your butt, you become dumb you become for about straight four, up to, four to six hours of anti-flow yeah, Lose it. <laughs> a lot of people take, take it to the hospital. <laughs> it sounded like he was having a stroke. Turns out he put a tincture in his ass. <laughs> so not this is new for me. Not a lot of nurses necessarily are like, they're not doctors in training, but your your partner is. Yeah, she just was like, um, she, had, she had, had been in medicine for eight years. She had a career at, at, at an, in a ICU at UCLA and was like, I don't know what to do. And I think I'd make a pretty good doctor. Wow. Well. And I was like, get that shit. Wow. Get that shit, doctor. Sorry, is that Ken in the Barbie movie? <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I'm just, I understand he's evolved. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just hoping that he has. Yeah, I think uh, I think that that was the best move for her. She She's kind of like standing at the edge looking at, you know, at like the daunting task of like making it through med school. But like. Yeah. Well, I love the bit. You have a bit about how your uh, wife is better than you, a better yes. person than you. Oh, not even close. How do you feel as a comedian, as a weird, I don't know. I think the older I get, I think we're all getting better in our 40s, but I also feel like I'm coming more, I'm getting more comfortable saying that comedians are compulsive weirdos, wounded weirdos. Oh, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Intense compulsion, meaning... All my 20s and 30s, I was like saying like all these therapists that are like, get in touch with the part of you that needs to make people laugh and is trying to crunch audiences up into a whatever shaped hole and kind of like spackle it inside. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, no, that's completely true. Like mm -hmm. you don't get into this. I, I'm going to say I don't get into this if I didn't have a compulsion, meaning like it's uncomfortable to not do it. In fact, I'll take it a little bit further and say, that in my family, sometimes I would feel, and they did their best. They gave me attention and love and all that stuff. But I was looking for a higher level of identity. I was looking to be recognized in a way that I didn't feel was met necessarily. It is a strange. So I needed strangers to it, match that. It's a, it's a combination of like intense insecurity and also like a pretty pretty clean confidence in yourself yeah, confident to be able to be like look 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 i'm not feeling like this is all put together just in case you agree with me i'm gonna put it together for you yeah like and, yeah. and like and then once you and then if i do it successfully can everything be okay yeah <laughs> inside of me that's right yeah. but when we're thinking about our time starting in chicago the people that I remember, I'm not putting them down. I remember deeply funny people doing stand-up and doing well at it. I'm not even talking about any of the the, the big names that you want yeah, to know. Yeah. I'm talking about people whose names I don't even know. Right. That I would see, that would murder, that would win some competition. Then they kind of hung it up, and that's fine. In fact, that's appropriate. The people that, like, stuck with it weren't necessarily the funniest ones they would become the funniest ones but they were the ones that that needed it i again my val was talking about like when i feel like my father doesn't see me i vanish i stop existing like that's what my wounded child self goes like i'm not here apparently like the the people that made me or whatever you want to say don't recognize me so i must just be vapor in the wind then of course I would get on stage and be like, I'm not vapor in the wind. Like right? I have fans come up to me and go like, how's Val? How's Brody? <laughs> and I, and I mush them up and I put them in the dad hole. Yeah. It doesn't fully work. Uh, ultimately I had to go in and I'm still doing like repairs that have nothing to do with validation. Mm -hmm. But uh, those were the people 
what do you think about that? I mean, the compulsive a- oh, 100%. aspect of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I can't be honest with you. I've never done, I've never gone to therapy. I did when I was young. My mom didn't like how much I was drinking when I was in high school. So she had me go see somebody and like, oh, well. that was, um, I wasn't ready for that. But since then I've never gone to therapy and, and it's, it's, uh, you know, listening to people way smarter than me talk about, um, getting shrunk and getting kind of like things put in perspective for them is, is always so fascinating because it, you know, it, it's those simple terms are very valuable. Um, I don't think that it's rocket science trying to figure out why we do stand up comedy though. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in the context of a relationship, I think that we are the ball and chain. Um, you mean you're the ball and chain. I'm going to go ahead and say we are Peter, <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> no, I didn't mean I'm, I'm opting out of what you're saying. I'm saying you mean yes, in your marriage, I, yes, you are the I'll ball speak and chain. for myself yeah, no, I'll, and all of comedy. No, uh, that's ex- you're hearing my question perfectly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. thank you yeah. as I'm saying between Val and I, I'm the ball and chain. Totally. I'm the one that's totally. going like, Can I we- don't know if I feel like swimming in the lake today. <laughs> Cause like something <laughs> interior is grinding yeah. me right. wrong. Right. She's just, I, I, I'm not, she can be as complicated and as nuanced as anybody. Right. And g- in general, she's the sunlight and I'm, I'm the shadow. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I joke about that too. I mean, I, that it all comes off of, you know, trying to say just broadly that my wife is a better person than me, but yes, yeah. when it comes to who's good cop, who's bad cop, like I'm, you know, she thinks she says, I like to be an asshole. And it's, I say that's a technicality, but she, uh, can I ask something? Yeah. Well, she finished that thought. I won't forget. Um, I just, I just think, I just think it comes from, I could probably complicate things a, a little bit more than she does. Can I ask you something though? Yes. And can I give you a little bit of love? Please do. Touch. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll put it in the terms of the Val does. Sometimes I say things that aren't in a, aren't appropriate or like I go in the direction that we shouldn't go. I'm testing limits in social situations, <laughs> like looking for where's the boundary testing and all that the sort cage. of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I want to bang on the walls uh-huh. of the prison and just see where the, where the weak spot is so we can start spooning. Uh-huh. So we can start spooning, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like Shawshank. Sure. And um, that's not always appropriate, but Pete Holmes redefining spooning. <laughs> We, my, Val and I do both kinds of spooning. We spoon at night, but also I will spoon my way out of the prison but, but of a also social situation. I will, lemon, I will melon ball my way Ooh. out of. If Andy Dufresne had a melon baller, he would have made it out before that he, storm. Yeah, he would have never had to. Yeah. He would have never had to send the warden to jail. He'd be fine. He'd be. He'd be gone. He'd be gone. Andy Dufresne. <laughs> uh, listen, <laughs> what I'm saying is Val in her, she's a love genius and she really knows how to love everybody in her life. And I am great, gratefully not an exception to that. Obviously I'm, I'm her husband, but she tells me and what I'm about to tell you, she's like, I like when you're kind of an asshole and I like that you're kind of, it's flattering to call me dangerous, but I'm just saying like a little socially like a like a Roman candle, like there's something going on. Yeah. She likes it. She admires it. She tells me this. I'm not. I'm not speculating. She says, "Look, I know. I say, hey, this friend is coming. Can you please not this, this, and this?" But she also wickedly delights. Yeah. Did you hear when I said, uh. "Could you imagine?" <laughs> like there are moments like Larry David would be proud when someone's like, "We should do that thing," and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not going to do that." <laughs> Just like right to there, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Because most people are living in a comfortable, you know, restraint. It's not a prison. They can break out. They can move out of it. And when you're with it, and this is the compliment, but this is the love I'm trying to give you. If you're a little bit naughty, a little bit wicked, that's what she loves about you. Whether or not she's there or no, ready she to does. tell you. She does. Cause she's I such I think a, that's exactly. Dude, she's such a. Do you think a, I asked you back on this podcast? Cause I'm like, <laughs> I hope he just tells me what a gentle boy he is. He went to the grocery store and he left three pennies and took none. No, I no. Lo- and that's what I love about your special. I'm like, listen to this free person, a liberated oh, person. And that's what she loves. And that's what I love. Thank you, buddy. Keep, Look at that leg. Keep kicking. <laughs> He's kicking. He kicks me. Can we me. get an insert of the he leg? He kicks me. <laughs> um, go on. No, she definitely follows yeah. rules and appreciates. I think she doesn't go as far as Val as to tell me that she yeah. appreciates my yeah. that took some any, time. any irreverence or yeah. whatever, but she's, you know, I mean, she's just 
a very um, capable person. Like she's effective. Yeah. And she's been able to operate in the system where she's following the rules. I was following the rules. I was the last one to finish my test. <laughs> yeah. Following the rules was like the never, never like really uh, reaped. I never reaped any benefits from the system that everybody was playing by. And Same. like, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I couldn't even do it. It wasn't that I, it was like I couldn't do it. And then I acted like I didn't want to do it, but I couldn't do it. And I, f I felt a lot of, in a lot of my life, and I still do probably, and this is probably like getting towards like, you know, what you're talking about, like being seen or something. A lot of the times it just made me feel dumb. It makes you feel dumb, like constantly going through the Nate, system that every- would you please high five this? Because thank you. It makes me feel dumb. And, and- I, I'm with you. And in a lot of scenarios, I don't know if I'm not dumb, but I don't give a fuck because in other situations that I'm able to produce and yeah. construct for myself, well, that, I turn out to be very smart. And then that fixes it. That's <laughs> that, the cure for dumb. Yeah. It's like- I, I haven't said this in a while. I think it was someone like Will Rogers or something. Like, wasn't he a cowboy? Yeah, and a, a writer and a producer yeah. and everything. There yeah. you go. Yeah. He said, um, I don't know what you're dumb in, but everybody's dumb in something. Something, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it poorly. Uh -huh. But like the cure for dumb isn't to necessarily like white knuckle your way through that and learn physics. Maybe it is for some people. But for me, it's to find the things you are smart at. Yeah. You just go like, I'm not good at this. And you move on and you find what you're good at. Is there anything better than that? Right. Nothing. It's and, the best. Yeah. And and it's, it, but it's sometimes you got to learn the hard way, which is working so hard towards something you want so badly. And then realizing like, you know, uh, all the wrong places, dude, you know, Wilkin Penub? Wilkin Penub, dude. You gotta like <laughs> stop looking for that nub, dog. You gotta like. I can't believe you got Wilkin Penub. <laughs> Wilkin Penub. That's Wilkin Eddie Murphy singing doing Buckwheat on Saturday Night Live. Wilkin Penub in all the long places. Wilkin Penub. And you got it right away. <laughs> We're so old. <laughs> that's like, that's yeah. 70s yeah. SNL right there, dude. Two AARP magazines are delivered to us. <laughs> oh, wow. What can Penub is on the cover? Wow. Two men in My America. Friend didn't Get that know reference. Crystal Pepsi. I go, you can see right through me, like Crystal Pepsi. And he went, what's Crystal Pepsi? And oh. this dude's in his 30s. And I was like, well, it's time for me to. <laughs> just walk into the ocean. <laughs> Not only do I know Crystal Pepsi, I know the good Crystal Pepsi. Uh, and then when they changed the recipe and Crystal Pepsi started to suck. <gasps> Remember that? No. For the first like month, Crystal Pepsi was Bob? awesome. It what? was so good. Tell me. It was so good. What did they do? I don't know. They changed it? I can't prove anything. I felt like they changed the recipe. This is like a new Coke situation. High school Nate Craig yeah. was furious that Crystal Pepsi had wronged him because I was in on Crystal Pepsi. I think I walked to the downtown center to buy a crystal pepsi like i saw the commercial uh -huh. and i was like we'll I see about this crystal I pepsi have it. <laughs> and i went i bought one did you know this is in um the tipping point all they I did think. was not add color okay. it was less <laughs> by the way aquafina is also pepsi it's the same water and they just didn't add anything and it costs the same yes now world they're selling us bottles they're some somebody else said that, but that's an easy one. Like they're just selling us bottles. It's just a bottle. They're gonna be okay shifting to wind and solar as long as we buy bottles. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> the whole the whole the whole ocean is gonna have to look like one of those floatable rafts. Oh my god. <laughs> that's all they care about. S buy bottles, you fucking slaves. That's gonna be I think about it. You know what I think is also out? I was watching bottles will be out. Bo bottles will be the like scorn of our time. Like, can you believe? Like, I, uh, like I'm like i sorry, these are plastic yeah, bottles. Yeah. You still occasionally are rocking a plastic bottle and it fucking sucks. I get it. And I do it. It's like my friend, same friend who didn't know what Crystal Pepsi is. He goes, look, every once in a while, we all throw away a battery. <laughs> and I was like, that is a brilliant observation. <laughs> like, you're caring about the planet. You're just holding a couple D batteries, just mm -hmm. going like, I, I don't I don't know what to do. <laughs> the rechargeable ones don't work. What do you mean? Uh, the the oh, charger they, breaks. The batteries just stop taking the charge. Where's Elon the Musk on that? Just to get us like good rechargeable. Nobody's interested, dude. Did you read this story in the New York Times about Mus about Sky? Skynet? I don't know who our senators are, so I'm gonna say <laughs> no. I didn't read the article in the New York Times. Anyway, we can move on. But no, tell me, just Skynet. Get, guess guess the number of satellites that Elon Musk has in outer in orbit around the Earth. 
I don't know what gambling is, but give me the over under, <laughs> like your bet. Over under? I don't know the over under. I, I'm going to say yeah, as 300. Three, it's like it's over 10,000. 10,000. Like he controls communication in like the low orbit of the earth. Like c countries are like, what, what do we do with this guy? Like Taiwan doesn't want to have anything to do with him because he, he sells too many cars to China and they think that he's got like, it's crazy. It's Wait, what is that? What does that mean? Because he tes he's selling too many Teslas to China. He's making Teslas in China. He's selling Teslas in China. So Taiwan doesn't trust him him to handle their communications because he thinks that China can influence him. Oh. And it's like, there's like these geopolitical, you know, factors that are now kind of overlapping and intersecting with like, you know, capitalism. And it's, it's through him and his, and, oh, wow. and SpaceX. The only thing I know about SpaceX and Musk's, Musk's uh, satellites is that um, sky gazers, people, uh, what is star watchers? What do you call them? That's Telescope folk. Oh, are pissed about these satellites. Dorks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pissed because if you it's changing. do like a time lapse image, all you'll see are streaks. Satellites. Because the satellites yeah, are going for by. real. They're yeah, they're in a thing. Yeah, you can crazy. I mean, all I know is that. I always wait for Elon to just one day be like, come to me, my pretties, and every <laughs> Tesla just drives back to him. Sure. <laughs> come to me. And they all flock in. It's real comic book shit, man. It is. I don't know. That was the that was, deleting Twitter off my phone when they changed the just the logo. That's how that's how dumb my brain is. Like uh, I was like, I'm still on Twitter. Fine, I'm still I'm oh, here. I'm still gonna be on Twitter. And then finally he changed the thing to X, and I was like, get the fuck off. Wait, of wait I don't understand what that means. He what changed happened? the little bird, the yeah. Twitter bird, to an X. Like Twitter's does not called Twitter anymore. It's not. It's called X. I it love is this. Not. I love this. It is. He changed the name to X. Who said this? Our, our changed, senators. Our, Right there at the bottom in the middle, X. That's Twitter now. No, I what should you not, dude? Well, do I tweet? I should you not. I mean, you would if you, you were still, still on there. But I was just—I just put one. I was just like, "This blows. I'm out of here. Find me." And, and I put my cities, and then I just like had my pin tweet, and I just put it off my phone. I'll probably go back on there eventually if I have to like post something or want to like. But like, wow, yeah, I didn't know. Peace in the Middle East, bro. Like X X out X Men. X. Why do you do it? I don't care. Who cares? Some, some, he's something. He's got. He's pitching people on. You know, it becoming like a banking uh, app and like all this other shit and like what? I don't know. It just kind of got it. You know, Twitter was where, where like, it was a very valuable tool for a while, and then it became just kind of like a a time suck and energy suck for a lot of people. Well, for some reason, it, it was like the most toxic of the places. It was pretty yeah. bad. It definitely wasn't. There's more toxic places on the internet, but like for the for the I mean, for the, big, the usership the for the three. big, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I don't know. I'm. It's it's was it's a nothing but. Thank you, thank you for taking that away, so that nobody, that, yeah, you know, all that time. No, we get could wasted all do well. By it's one of those situations of where like, well, there. What was I reading? This is great, by the way. Oh, good. I like that. It has um. Do you, I, I also take this as a supplement, HMB. Do you know what HMB is? I don't know what HMB Helps is. Helps your body with recovery. So it's really good after workouts and before oh, workouts. good. And now that I'm older, watermelon too is really good for recovery. Okay. You seem very fit. Thank you. It's weird um, that I'm just like, yeah, I've been looking at your body. <laughs> but I'm like. Look at my body. You also look very fit, buddy. Well, You're taking thanks, care man. of it. You thanks, got things. Man. You got your little fix-it gadgets, your little <laughs> bronze bracelet. I was there, having thanks. headaches behind my left eye, and I put this on, and it, I, I don't know if it helped or if it's psychosomatic, but I don't, I don't care. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? At 44? Right. It's I'll psycho. put on a bracelet. Yeah. It's so much better than them being like. Your brain's expanding and you're going to explode. Yeah, you should probably have this thing that we tested on eight generations of bunny rabbits. That's right. No, yeah. way, no, 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 no. I'll, no, I'll do this. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this wear, thing. I'll just wear this. I'll do this And thing. you know when I put this thing on? And consider pain differently. <laughs> exactly. I was in a coffee shop and this bar barista just goes like, got to get those essential metals on your body. And I was like, all right, that's a little sign from the universe. <laughs> this guy just yelled essential metals. I'm like, all right. I'm on board. Have you ever almost died, Nate? There are all these questions I ask since you've come on this podcast. Wow. They're uh, new questions. I, I don't. You've never almost died. You seem like such a wakeboard almost die guy. <laughs> you seem like such uh, a, a Marty McFly on the back of a pickup truck and a skateboard and I almost died. Guy. Um, I got riptides. <laughs> I've been pulled out by a rip before. Yeah, pulled um, out by a rip. Got, um, I don't know if I've ever almost died. I mean, I, I always think about how close I come to getting just 
pancaked by automobiles on a regular basis. Walking? Walking, but like... I thought about that driving in today. I was like, I'm going 73 miles an hour, and yeah. so is everyone else, and I right. don't know these people. Yeah, it's why... <laughs> it's why. Um, that's the, that's one thing my wife has always said, you're never getting a motorcycle, because she worked in the ICU, so she saw like... Just, uh, yeah, it's not, not good. Yeah, per, listen the to percentages the... percentages are bad. <laughs> listen to the doctors. Yeah, yeah, listen to the doctors. Listen to the doctors. My ex-wife's dad... I mean, we don't need any more data on smoking, but he he was like a lung therapist, and he was like, just don't smoke. He's like, just, just, tr-. he didn't even give me details. Yeah. He's like, just trust me. He's going in and playing the bongos uh-huh. on people's lungs, trying to yeah, get them yeah, to yeah. move a pound uh-huh. of butter. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking disgusting. Just don't smoke. I'm super excited, you guys. We have a new Pete's Pick on this episode. And run, do not walk to check this one out. This app is brought to us by our friends at Brain FM. Brain FM has been a part of my daily creative routine for years now, and I'm so happy to be partnering with them. Every morning, I sit down at my computer, throw on my headphones, these headphones, hit focus, hit creative flow, and boom. I'm in the pocket, ready to work, create, and focus. Without it, I find it so much harder to complete tasks. I procrastinate. I have a hard time meeting deadlines, even if they're my own self-imposed deadlines for my own good. But with Brain FM, I am signaling to my brain, literally, that it is time to get things done and it works. So what is it? On the surface, Brain FM seems like an app that gives you the perfect background music for creative work, study, reading, meditation, relaxation, and sleep. And that is true. It is incredible music to work or read or meditate to, but under the surface, it is stewing so much more than that. Brain FM's composers work hard to create amazing sounding music that doesn't distract and uses their patented audio technology to boost your mental state on demand. Brain FM's scientists and composers, they add patterns to their music that change the patterns in your brain, creating increased blood flow and electrical connectivity activity in the brain and increasing focus in as little as five minutes. Regular music, think about it, is designed to be distracting. It wants your attention, so you're constantly interrupted using regular stuff to skip. You have to skip, and it pulls you out of that flow that you're trying to get into. So skip the skipping. With Brain FM, you can get a wide variety of sounds and genres from natural soundscapes to lo-fi electronic music that get you in the zone almost immediately without having to pick the perfect playlist, and it's science-backed. Brain FM actually has the scientific research to back up their claims through close collaboration with neuroscientists and a wide array of field experiments and testing. But even better, their music is made by real composers, not computers, but uh, instead multi-instrumentalist composers. That way, the soundscapes on Brain FM still have the warmth of real people. So check it out. Support the show. Support your brain. Support your creativity, your goals, and and, and procrastination. Go to brain.fm slash weird to get 30% off. 30% off your first year of Brain FM and start getting more done with less effort and unlock your best self on demand. Experience the difference that the right music can make in your life. Go to brain.fm slash weird for 30% off. We're also brought to us by our friends, my new favorite, best looking, best feeling shorts I've ever owned, bird dogs. I've never been a big short guy. That is true. And it turns out I was rocking the wrong shorts. Even though I love swimming, I also hate swim trunks, but bird dogs change both of those categories for me, especially now that it's summer. I love liberating my legs and getting in water as often as possible. And now thanks to my dogs, I can get and do that while feeling totally comfortable and looking really good. Bird dogs make you look good. Bird dogs have stretch khaki shorts designed for a fit, slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look, which I love. And bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. And honestly, you know, yeah, it, they look better, and it's not Lululemon. <laughs> They're not stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches, so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And bird dogs uses anti stink, anti sweat, like sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash weird and you get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. I use this tumbler almost every day. I love it. That's bird birddogs.com slash weird for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you support your short look, support your bathing suit look and support the show birddogs.com slash weird. All right, everybody, let's get back to Nate.
Um, what were we talking about? Almost dying. Oh, uh, I did fall out of a back of a truck once. Okay. That was probably, I look, I think about that and it makes me like. What happened? Uh, well, I was just up working up north at a summer camp. I was like a maintenance guy at a summer camp and all my, all my friends grew up at the camp and they were counselors and I was riding in the back of the truck and like I was standing up in the truck and we were going slowly down like kind of like a, a you know, a cut through road to like a back athletic field. And then my buddy got to the end of the thing and I was just kind of daydreaming and he sped up and then he turned and I just flew out of the truck. <sighs> and like, I, the next thing I knew, I was like sitting straight up like this on the truck or sitting straight up like this on the ground. And they like stopped and came, are you okay? And it was like, I, you like I could have broke my neck. I could, yeah. you know, yeah. it was, I, that was like, I ragdolled. It was, yeah. it was, um, I bet it would have been pretty funny to see, but also horrifying horrifying i mean not for you it was horrifying you, yeah you were first person yeah i pretty yeah pretty it's, pretty nice rotation i'm sure the rotation was perfect <laughs> just because i landed like yeah I, on I, like, your butt i was sitting up like it was perfect it was like a you know it's like a idiot baby falling <laughs> off a mattress you know it turned out but that's that i think about that I, you know i've hit my head on the bottom of a pool before that I always oh. that I always think about. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hate. Mm -hmm. Hate it. Yeah. That's one Chip of those this tooth ones. right here. Doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the fuck. I know, dude. I think about that. What can Penub? What can Penub, dude? Wait, you just jumped in and bunk? It was it was an old it's an old neighborhood pool back where I grew up, so it was like the diving well wasn't that deep and it started to the incline started. Only people who have hit their heads on the bottom of pools know the term diving well. Diving well. And it turns out the diving well wasn't it's a support group of people that have hit, hit their it. heads and they're like, Oh yeah, that's uh, a lawsuit yeah. right there. The well. Oh, they didn't put the well on right. <laughs> How oh, deep was the well? Nah, this well's not the color. You're gonna have to move that well wall back you have to push that back right there you're gonna have to go straight up right there the, the guy who what is that called the contractor, contractor. who just fixes his Contra diving wells never swims no never I, I, never I don't touch the stuff i don't get in there <laughs> half of these wells are made for people to break their faces half of these wells are gonna hurt you i just think i don't want to get too dark because it is a dark subject but it's just like the majesty of diving married with the tragedy of of being a quadriplegic. Yeah, yeah. It, it's what it's just the worst. Yeah, it's just the worst. So I'm so glad you're okay. Okay, yep. okay, because okay. that guy came in there. That and guy came up that in there. He's like, he's like, okay, okay, hold up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about ghosts? You ever see a ghost? I have never seen a ghost. I don't necessarily believe in ghosts. Uh, don't necessarily, a little opening if he wants a specter to visit him tonight. I the ghost of necessarily is going to visit you. <laughs> I, I love a I love a nice I love a nice uh, cosmic uh, rhythm karmic uh, mm -hmm. occurrence. What? Huh? But just the just a, the predictability of a human existence and kind of. It, you mean ghosts are too obvious? Ghosts are a little bit. It's also narcissism. It's like it I is. saw yeah. a ghost. It's kind of along the same lines as like everybody thinks like the world's gonna end while they're alive on this speed earth. Speed agree. Speed agree. What's that called? I'm just agreeing with you quickly. Yeah. It's, 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 What's it's, that called? It's, what, what was that? Speed agree. Oh, okay. All right. Just I mean, didn't go over the lingo, but uh <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. Didn't know the the vernac. Forgive me, weirdos. No, that's not even a show thing. That's just a me thing. Okay, speed used to say it in a writer's room. Yeah, so so Laura so speed agree, and <laughs> I think yes. And but that the, the, the world is gonna. Everyone's always thought the world was gonna end. And when they happen to be here, and that's yeah. like just total narcissism. Like, yeah. Oh really? Yeah. You, I'll, it's, I'm gonna of course. add it to the mix. Uh, thinking God is mad at you is is an absolute narcissistic trip. Oh, how about like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll see your I'll see your uh speed degree and I'll raise you a speed degree. Thinking God is mad at someone else is maybe the most narcissistic. And God hates everyone you hate. Yeah, but is that's that just you? Literally, is that just you? What do you mean? Is that just another? That's like you, f f uh, just creating one stupid simple you know monkey layer of protection for yourself around like crushing everybody else's behavior up and putting it in that that whole wait what do you mean like you're it's kind of another version of like hating other people hating other people is just you're wanting to please other people i think i understand what you're saying i'm um, sorry if it's a if it's just a little bit of a reach it's like you know you know like the anger is crying 
Yes. Anger is is weeping. You yes. know, like that's why I see Donald Trump Jr. screaming on the. I just see a. I literally just see him weeping. Me too. I into see the with camera. Trump too being like. And Daddy, do you see me? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, do you care? Uh, <laughs> We've sang this before. I have a billion dollars. I have fine golden hair. <laughs> he's, he's just. Nobody acts that way. Nobody acts that way. If they ever. got what they needed. Um. So like, you know, it's, I mean, it seems so diametrically opposed, you know, whereas you would kind of own your hatred of other people as opposed to like being a victim of your self, own self-loathing. But in reality, they're kind of, you know, just a pretty simple. Oh yeah. You can't, I would, different I sides would of the say same coin kind you of thing. can't yeah. handle your own self-loathing. Yeah. So you then project it onto other people for sure. And then go, they're the idiots. I do it constantly yeah. but at least this is it's like you can be uh ignorant or you can be consciously ignorant i'm consciously ignorant i'm like i know i'm doing it at least i know i'm doing it's it. a little bit more empowering self yeah it's right. a ton it's a huge step there's yeah, only yeah. one more step yeah, yeah which is not doing it and the step there is to know you're doing it and i know that i i do it all the time yeah constantly judging other people and it's so i can go i'm a good boy and they're a bad boy as i've gotten older i've gotten really good at once i feel myself, you know, you get whipped up in your brain, you, you get like a couple thoughts in a row, chain reaction about a certain thing that really drives you nuts and it changes your physicality. Sure. Like it, it shoots those, those, that juice into you. Yes. I've gotten way better as I've gotten old and be like, stop it. Oh, that's, really? That's your comfort zone. You know how to do that. Yeah. It's like the thing you're most familiar with. It empowers, it makes you feel empowered because you can do that. You can feel it. That's you mean kind anger. Of anger. It's yeah. the easiest emotion. It's like, it's I like, I agree. It's like any, you know, it, that's, I think, what we've kind of like mistaking people mistake anger for strength a lot like they mistake kindness for weakness. Sure. And it's, that's a very low level understanding of your own human existence. Yeah. If, if you're, if if you if that really feels right to you, yeah. you haven't ever considered just the base kind of simplicity of that mm. emotion. Um, so now, when you feel again, having just seen my parents, I, I've noticed just how in my body these feelings are. We think we're thinking like, "Boy, I'm angry," but then when you get a little bit more in your body, you're like, "Oh, it's like boiling acid in my stomach," yeah. or it's a clenched jaw, or like you're tight fingers and all that stuff and that is sort of the first step to just kind of if that's where it's starting that's where you can start that's where the solution is too you can start releasing it mm -hmm. breathing a little bit trying to get in touch with those feelings acknowledging them i think they just want to be acknowledged a little bit but you, you tell me your feelings. i'll give myself i it, uh i am an advocate for road rage in general oh. i think that's a safe place i mean i think it's got to get out I don't think that you can, I mean, I don't think you can possibly solve it that it's such a monkey. Wait, you like road rage? I do. I do. I just do. I think it's pretty healthy. Just what? I, as you long as you're mean not. It's as, like being at the ballpark and you can be like, fuck, fuck you. you. It's like yeah. that. Yes. It's, it's like a useful, safe way. Safe way. As long as you're not like running down school children. Yes, yeah, you but don't I, mean real. I don't think actually like endangering people's lives in your automobile, but yeah. like. But you mean like the dance of it. I flip you off. You, you flip, flip me, me off. off. It's pretty useful. Yeah, honk, honk. I, I was wrong, but you'll never hear it from me. You know, you know what I like? That's hilarious, by the way. This happened to me recently, uh, two, three days ago. I changed lanes and I just didn't look enough which is crazy. And they did honk. Oh, yeah. And they were right. Yes. And then they did the thing where they pass me fast. Yes. It's like the it's like that's how they get mad at you. Yeah. It's to show you they zip by you yeah, like yeah. I want to get the fuck away from you, yeah. you idiot. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about this, Nate. Maybe you can help me. There's no hand gesture for like I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Like I was wrong. I kind of did like a like, I, I know, but it kind of looks like I'm going, like, easy. Yeah. I think they I probably got like, you. Ah, ah. I think that? they got you. you think I think they, they heard you. I think this is universal for, um, this is like a well, universal. On me. Because if it's if it's anything but this, there's a there's a gesture. There's yeah. a, there's a, uh, yeah. Like, that's different. A, I'm like, a gentle hand up. 
Yeah. Can I tell you about something I think about all the time and you as a road rage connoisseur can help me? Yes. So I'm on the road. This is back when I was married the first time. So I must be like 23. And uh, I see this, this young couple also. And, and I, I don't know if race is important, but it's a young white couple. And they start changing lanes into a truck that is driven by a large, like heavy, not uh-huh. like muscly, not Terry Crews, but a black guy, but a big, heavy black guy. And they're, they're changing lanes. And he swerves. It's scary. He like, he really was wronged. These knuckleheads did not look and endangered his life. In their Hyundai. In their and, Hyundai. And he's got. He's a, in a real. He's got a, like an 18 wheeler. No, got, no, it's no. Like, it's, it's, it's like a, a, it was like a pickup truck or maybe just like an SUV okay, kind of thing. Okay. And he's like, and then he straightens himself. And I'm watching. And then I watch as it unfolds, they pull over a lane because they're just like, we just fucked. They looked like 19 years old. Uh-huh. Like in my mind, because I was a young married couple, like they're probably like a young married couple. Just two, <laughs> two dingbats. Just a couple married 19 religious. year olds. Yeah, okay. just, just like me, religious 19 year olds. <laughs> and uh, track guy, he doesn't, missionaries. he doesn't do angry speed off. He does the more frightening thing which is he slows down and gets behind them Mm -hmm. and then starts following them. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated with what was happening. You follow him. Okay. I'm not a man. I'm a 22 year old newlywed. You follow him. I did not follow him. You're following this big black guy. No, this is a better story. (laughs) This is also kind of, we had cell phones, but not in the way that we have cell phones now. Uh T9. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a Nokia. Uh Uh-huh. And my my ringtone on my Nokia was called Jump, and it was bump bump bana bana da 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 da. Jump, super door, great okay. song. All right, so what happens? The big black guy, mis- poor missionaries, poor young white couple. Well, big I don't black recall man. narrativizing this as uh, that's what I heard, but acidly go ahead. and as racially as you. I'm just kind of noting it's hard that to, there are dynamics. It's hard to hear your own voice. You know what's voice. another different? <laughs> <laughs> There's another difference. Youth, and he's definitely in his 30s. Like he's a grown man, and these are two little scamps. There's a lot of differences. All I did was I drove past them terrified for everyone involved. And I, I looked and the guy in the car was like this, like, like going real, like right on their butt. And I was like, what do you do? And you know what? I might, you're the kind of guy I might call if I'm, if I just really risk the life of somebody and they're really mad at me, you're on that list. You're on the list of like, call Nate. Don't call me. And just go, Nate. I want no part of this man that you wronged. Well, that's the that's what makes it so interesting. Is you did almost kill him. Uh-huh. You did. Yeah, yeah. He went. Whoa, he like yeah. fishtailed. Uh-huh. He has a right to be mad. Yeah. But there are no hand gestures that can say, "I'm, I'm sorry. Stop following me. I've, I don't want to talk this about for this." Twenty years. <laughs> like you, you pull over. You roll down the window. You try to talk to him. Like let him yell at you. Yeah. Because that'd be helpful. To your point. Road rage, it's healthy. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. Let him call me a piece of shit. I don't like the following. <laughs> I don't like the following. That looks like it's going to, you know. It's more menacing. It's menacing. It's, it's yeah, it's like this could be your behavior on the road does not just have to happen here on the road. Like this can. We could take this. We can take this. Off the road. We can take this inside. Yeah. You want to take this. You want to step inside? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what would you, what do you do? Uh, I've, I've given a lot of thought, so I have an answer. I think you just kind of, I mean, if somebody wants to do that, you know, they got to really, really, they got to really, really feel strongly about an accident that didn't happen. Yep. Good job. You saved yourself. I almost caused problems for us. And, you know, you got to do what you got to do. What do you mean? You're saying you pull over and fight? No, no, no. But if he's going to follow me and wants to fight me when we get to, when we get to where I'm going, because I'm Nana's house. I'm, at, I'm going to Nana's. You're going to kick my ass in Nana's you, driveway. You're going to have to kick my ass in front of my own grandmother. My only if thought that's what you want to do. Drive until he calms down. 
Keep you're going. Throw, you're throwing at Cartole CDs at him. <laughs> <laughs> throwing self help books. Religious pamphlets. Yeah. Enya. You're blasting Enya. Who can say <laughs> where the wind blows? You drive Windows up to, down. Drive up to church. You weren't Mother. going to church. Yeah, go to <laughs> church. church. Go to church. And drive into the sanctuary. <laughs> you can't, because a lot of fights happen in the church parking lot. You got to go into the sanctuary. So you're up the stairs in the in yeah, the yeah. fellowship hall, <laughs> and then you get out. School for the blind. And go. They can't. They won't. Who's who's right and who's wrong? Go to a playground. Playground. You can't let these kids see what's about to happen. Yeah, yeah, sir. Please for the children. Can we let this go oh, for the God. children? <laughs> Turn it up really loud. Turn it up really loud. You get out of your car. You're like, you know what? I know that. I know what happened back there. I just want to listen to me for just one second. I know what happened back there. The return to I, innocence. I, 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 oh. Sir, are you married? <laughs> Have you ever had a disagreement? Have you ever had a disagreement behind the wheel of a car? Well, okay. I think that's what they say. You should go like, my name is Michael Daniels. <laughs> I'm Michael. I live Mike. in South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> I like Indian food, but I can't handle spice. Like, this is what you have to yell at this man. Humanize yourself. Yeah, What's that? I love the Sopranos, but I can't watch the violence. What's that? What's that? Silence of the Lambs? He's humanizing her. Oh. They're, they're trying to humanize her. Is that a thing? In yeah, I, I, I feel like it was Silence of the Lambs when they when they get on when they're the parents are talking about the name of the the <laughs> the, one, the chick that whole, traps his dog. Oh no! Your dog's in a lot of pain, sir, Mister. That chick, her parents are on TV. I've only like, seen it. They're once. like using her name. And when they, I saw Silence and, of the Lambs, I was so scared. I was mad that I was watching it. Oh, it's, when she's in the dark. That's good. Yeah, that's I love a, your line. That's a good, good. It's a good movie. That's a. Yeah. I'll never watch it again. Hold on. Hit it. What did you like? I liked when you said that Putin is the bartender in The Shining. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Putin's fantastic. balls are the bartender Putin's in The Shining. Putin's balls are the bartender yeah. in The Shining, just our, stirring up trouble. Our joints eject, our our bodies are turned to mush, and our balls are serving drinks the whole time. I also want a little love for finding the return to innocence in my brain. You got that. You did. Aye, yeah. aye, aye, aye. <laughs> There was a time in the 90s that white folks couldn't get enough of like kind of like a new agey song, but with like a... Oh, yeah. Remember like oh, oh, chant? Oh, oh. Oh. They'd just be like chant oh. monks. Like, we are, we are <laughs> sitting in the diner having Dad. coffee and it's great. I Whoa. don't know the... Yeah, what's the but instead I stir in my coffee. And instead I stir in the milk. Wow. Wow. All right. He is begging for my money, and I don't have none to give him. So I go and buy more coffee, and I is like my fucking coffee. <laughs> and I drink my coffee quickly because here comes one more beggar, and I don't want to make eye contact. About- so instead, I stir my milk. Phil Collins loved it. A little Kermit at the end there. Milk, milk. So instead, instead, I stir, I stir my, my milk. milk. <laughs> doop, 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 Miss Piggy. That's my jam. Um, Phil Collins. Phil Collins, Another Day in Paradise. Remember that song? How does he go? He calls out to the man on the street. Oh. He says, sir, can you help me? It was back in the 90s. We didn't know how to feel about all the homelessness. We still don't. But Phil Collins was like, here, yeah. I'll help. Oh, think twice. It's just another day for you and me in paradise. Oh, think twice. And I don't know the next one. Yeah. I think he just says it again. Yeah. Yeah. White people went real R&B adjacent there. That's what it was. Yeah. S and C. Those are the letters next to R&B. <laughs> <laughs> you that's auti- that's near autism right there i think we just brushed against autism you know how i think i how i show up as autistic a little a little autistic autistic hmm. and as a married man i wonder if you can relate sometimes my wife touches me anybody touches me and i'm just like i can't right now on the face anywhere anywhere on your body but definitely on my face that's why you keep kicking me with the bottom of your shoe well yeah i want you to have it's every your- plague that i've walked through <laughs> <laughs> do you ever get that um my 
no, no I, okay. used to. Just, I used to. I used to with my face. That. Yeah, okay. I used to with my face. That's what made me think maybe you did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is this happened to me yesterday. I mm. got off. The, I was on the plane, and I, uh, that's where I am a rule follower. When it comes down me to too. like, I don't have another choice. My only choice is for the law to be obeyed. I agree. Turn your fuck. These people texting Bolden when you can just get on the Wi-Fi. They give you free texting Wi-Fi now. Still, still people have got that LTE up there. Just kind of fucking with the instruments. Fucking with the instruments. So you can I, send. What are this, you going to send? This is the one. I think this is the end because I fucking the broke the rules. Couple, I was on a window seat. Couple wouldn't get up. People are streaming by us. They're getting off the plane out of order. Wait, you're at the window seat. I'm at the window seat. My row. It's my row's turn. To exit. To exit the plane. Nate. People are. I'm not a jerk. I will middle. never let unless it's a connection and I never. have to. I don't care I will who it never. is. It could be a one. You're supposed to let the connections go. The but connections. Okay. The connections. The connections. Go. I understand. But I I see those people. They're ve- they're they're trying to win by a nose. You know what I mean? They're coming in. This is not going to make I'll a difference. I'll step into the aisle and and block. This is not going to make a difference for you. Yeah. What needs to be upheld is the integrity of. The, the unwritten system. rules of That's right. the airplane. That's right. And this I, isn't to the be end fair, of, I bet it's a written rule. It's not the end of a movie where you can all, some are going to watch the credits, some oh, are going to stay for the little the Marvel intoxicating, end scene. I, They're just intoxicated by that open aisle off the plane. And I get that. That I get. <clears throat> you, have to, you have to say no to that. They're, you mean they're trying to have like a Catholic kind of restraint? They just see it. They see they're right there. <laughs> these people are here. These people are here. I could get right there. I could maybe get it is here. a deep spiritual practice. There's a lot of opportunities to like become to enlightened. No, oh. become enlightened at the airplane in, in an airplane and at the airport. Just accept. Let people go in front of you. Your place. Yeah. I still can't do it. I'm like I got to get on. I, or just, well, I'm, but I'm still. I'm see. I'm putting what you're saying in the context of following the fucking rules. Like yeah. it just let get you out. Don't worry about you. Wait your turn. Your way. Well, this is what I always say. When Val came with me to Manhattan, I was like, I always the I always remember telling her, the way to be polite here is to be rude, and it's the same on an airplane. Be rude. Get out. Go. Go. Don't be there, whittling going like we're all getting off eventually <laughs> no you're fucking up the system uh-huh. go move up yeah move up same with traffic yeah that's right same with traffic be you're trying to be helpful aggressive got be, to be, be aggressive. aggressive got to be a g g r i s s i v e our senator is named diane goggins diane feinstein and david goggins no not david goggins ultra marathoner david goggins no no, no, no. That's our senator, right? No, no, no. Yeah, he, he ran with a broken leg. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, that's not what happened, Peter. By the way, with my parents, as I say the most basic thing about David Goggins, all this work that we put into our making movies or TV or whatever it is, just know to most of the country, you're just whatever the number one headline is. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just whatever the most basic thing about you is. I, like David Goggins, broken leg. Um, Bill Burr. Didn't he yell at people in Philadelphia? <laughs> um, just anybody. anybody. Not just, Star Wars. Well, you know, with uh, Pee Wee Herman dying, my, I know my parents oh, are like, didn't he jerk peace. off in a theater? theater you know, like, yeah. that's, what, that's what it is. Yes, definitely rest in peace. Damn. What, a, what an influence and a beautiful person. But he made that mistake. That's, that's the headline. Mistake. There's a lot of people that are just, you know, and that's okay. That's what entertainment is to them. It's just, it's just something they sip yeah. on their way following a young couple that just cut them off. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me, Nate, any new thoughts on Tell Me All Your Thoughts on God? Do you have any new spiritual feelings? You're a married man now. Um, it's been nine years since you're on the show. I this is well, this is my mantra in yoga. Mantra? Mantra. Yeah. My this is my favorite. This is your mantra. This is my favorite monster. Yeah. Um He's dusty. I um Strength, symmetry, clarity, and forgiveness. And that has kind of come, Ooh. that has kind of come. I'm sorry, am I at a screening of the new 300 movie? <laughs> that's that's what I wanted for myself. Strength, symmetry, symmetry clarity. Because I am doing clarity. something physical. It is a physical meditation yes. in yoga. Yes. Not that I do a lot of it, but like um, right. I try to do it. I think it's, it's really benefited me as a person. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Uh, with Centering. A, with a human body. Um, and what ha- that has become is I will, they will, they'll say, sometimes they'll say, think about someone, you know, focus on someone and, and, or, uh, send them good thoughts. And I always have chosen 
somebody that I love, I care very much about, right? Um, and friends and family and all that. But what I've been doing in more recent years is forcing myself to think about someone that really causes me anxiety or stress yeah, and just treating them exactly like the people that I love. Because in reality, it is that, yeah. um, you know, and that's, you know, pretty humbling. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah. Loving kindness, it's Bush League to love people that are kind and generous to you. That do something for you. Yeah, yeah it's self-serving. It's also, yeah. it's it, yeah, it's self-serving is better than narcissism. Yeah. It's self-serving. It's like, oh, good for you. Mm -hmm. You love your kids right. when they're young and little and You're supposed sweet. to. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to love your kids. Exactly. Hilarious. Wook and Penub. But like loving the difficult people in your life. Well, that's rock. That's no, and speaking, of, speaking of Louis C.K. I didn't think it was Eddie Murphy. That's the end of the bit. I think is you know he's like he's like ah that might be different specials. But that's a I think that's a C.K. joke in Bigger and Blacker when he's like you're <laughs> I you know in rock, rock Bigger and Blacker yeah by Chris Rock. But I think C.K. wrote a lot of that. He did. I think he wrote some of it or yeah really yeah I think he's got I think it's written by Chris Rock and Louis C.K. I'm not I'd have to go back and check but I think oh, so wow. but like there's one line that I'm like oh that was for sure C.K. where the, where Rock is like I, you know women be like I could raise a man with the, I could raise a kid without my man I don't need no man to raise a kid and she's like yeah well you, you're you, you what is, and then what's got him I'm fuck up the joke he goes uh you can drive a you can drive a car with your feet it doesn't mean it's to be done with your hands no, you can drive a car with your feet. It doesn't mean it's to be done. Is what do you the mean, joke. Like the Flintstone? You can drive a car with your feet. Oh, it I'm like, you do drive a car with your feet. The pedals. No, it's <laughs> it doesn't mean it's to be done. Yeah, it's pretty clean. You can steer a car with right, your it's, feet. You could, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a pretty, it's a, I would, it's a very specific yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. execution of the joke. Yeah, no, I hear you. And it's like, um, anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. You didn't. Did you? Yeah, I did. I totally interrupted you and went on my own story. But, but I liked it. I did. Well, we're just talking about purity, excellence, purity, fortitude, strength, strength, symmetry, cl clarity, and forgiveness. So take me through all those. Um, just, um, well, strength because it feels good and makes you feel strong and capable and it placates my human existence. Yeah. Uh, symmetry because I think that's something that I forget about. Um, what does that mean? Like balance? Balance, yeah, balance, and and it's it 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 doesn't it's the it's not just like doing everything I can do with my right arm with my left arm. It's uh, that also kind of projects onto kind of the balance that you need in your life. Yeah. You know, thinking about people that have wronged you just as much as you think about people that have helped you in a good light and yeah. trying to kind of you know. Oh, that's beautiful. And then um, clarity is. Oh, that's how we got into that bit. Clarity is uh, like obvious, you know, just not being distracted, being you know, lucid, not being interrupted by your own distractions when trying to explain what you mean by clarity. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> and then, but single point focus, like focused, is another way to put it, I suppose. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, focusing on what you're doing. Um, it doesn't mean, are you still clarity about what you're doing? Mm -hmm. I still drink. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I do. And then, and, and um, totally. <laughs> I mean, I. I'm just curious because clarity does sound like a sober word to me. Right. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. Um, I was just, no, no, this isn't judgment or saying you can't use the word clarity. Oh, buddy, I know. I was curious if there was a secret sobriety. It's a fascinating conversation. Is it? Yeah, alcohol for me. Tell me. I mean, there's a, a large part of me that thinks I should quit. There's a large part of me that says I'm, do, I will not be on this earth long enough to have the audacity to stop drinking wine, mm. period. Wine is great, Mark. It's right? fucking even you just saying wine. Wine, as it's, if it's special. It's it is special. It's fucking <laughs> biblical. It's great. They pair I it with mean, all oh, our favorite wine foods. Wine loves that. I wine loves. It. You know how excited Big Wine was when Jesus was like, "Let's have some wine." <laughs> they were like, "Fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah!" They were so thrilled. He's making our shit. Yeah, exactly. it's coming out of them. His first miracle was making their product. Yeah, they were set. That doesn't mean it's not just fucking booze. It's booze. It's delicious booze. It's. it's I understand. Um, Write <laughs> uh, that down. Uh, it's delicious booze, and <laughs> I mean, if I ever, if I ever stop drinking wine, I'm going to stop eating red meat as well. I see. Because I don't eat red meat without red wine. I think it's disrespectful to the animal. <laughs> I'm serious. 
I think it's disrespectful to the animal. No, I think it's. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. No. Yeah. I see. I got over it. Get a drink. Well, Eat the fucking cow without the grapes. <laughs> get the grapes. No, I'm serious. Why uh, you can't possibly be serious? I am serious. I'm dead serious about that. I, I think that if why why do I want a steak if I don't have a glass of wine with it? Yeah. I have no need for a steak if I'm not drinking a big, beautiful glass of beautiful red wine with it. Beautiful red wine. Beautiful red wine. We love the wine. We have the wine. The wine. I really need more than that. That's uh, just it's, saying it's just how you feel. It compliments. Why? It's the flavors. The, the flavors. It, yes. Absolutely. I just I just don't buy it. Like the people that love wine and the flavors, I'm like, we could get those flavors with a, a blend of okay. grape juices. Well, let me put it this it's way. It's getting drunk. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. I think that there is, by my assessment, the downside of raising and eating red meat with 9 billion people on the planet. It's not sustainable. It's not. So in order to do it at the level that I think is the most best enjoyment of it it's got to be with a glass of wine otherwise i, I don't feel like saying. it's i don't feel like it's it's i see what you're saying i'm getting the most i don't i'm I not i gotta squeeze the juice you're making it special you're saying i don't want to yeah. smoke a cigar in a cab right you're gonna smoke it on the balcony yep of, on a, a, yep. of a log cabin yep. in aspen yep. i get it with a glass of scotch you're, or bourbon you're doing, yep. and alcohol shows up again yeah <laughs> I think that's, I mean, it really does heighten my enjoyment of certain things. I that, there's a reason why it's paired with certain things. I understand. And also, side note, um, I don't often, unless I'm like, I don't really drink whiskey anymore just to drink. Um, I'm too old for that shit. I've shifted to tequila. Um, but if I am going to drink bourbon, I like chocolate. Chocolate and bourbon together? Yeah. These are interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very, it's very intense pleasure <laughs> to, to do that. It really it's is. Very intense. It's very intense pleasure, pleasure. Peter. Something about that was so <laughs> honest. That's what made me laugh. I, I, I just, look on your face. Pleasure. A pleasure. It was just I real. could stop. I could give up beer. I could give up booze. It's going to be a hard, it's going to be a, a long, long day when I stop drinking wine. I just think it's the best thing that humans have ever done. Wine. Wine. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Spoken from somebody who doesn't have heartburn, apparently. We're a we're a lowly we're a low we're kidding. a lowly hill species, and wine. We found out. I mean, there's just, it's just so complex. It's so complex. It makes us feel better for a fleeting moment. Yeah. In a way that's like and then worse, but yes, maybe if you overdo it, yes. But there's a sweet spot, just like caffeine, sure, which you've also been able to give up, Peter. Good job. No, I drink caffeine. You drink caffeine? I do. Okay, what do you drink? You drink? Yeah. I, I, by the way, pal, I completely understand what you're saying. Don't call me. Listen here, pal. 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 Chief. Chief. <laughs> give it to me. I, that was a sincere pal. <laughs> there's pal that's like you know. It was a sincere pal leading into you having figured out something else about the world. Definitely not. What I was it, trying to say that's not the attitude that I'm coming at you. Okay. With. All right. Okay. I, I don't feel that it is. I'll tell I appreciate the retraction. I just I guess what I'm saying is I used to get so into the 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 retraction. The flavors and the regions and all that stuff. And it, with coffee. No, no, no. With, with wine. wine. Yeah. I'd buy books about it, would buy a case of wine and do tastings. And I was like, I'm an alcoholic. You know what I mean? I'm just like, that's yeah. just a, it's just a fancy way of, of doing the same drug is what I'm saying. Sure. That's, that's, I guess that is the judgment if you want to get at it. Oh yeah. That's no, I, I, this is never, this has not, not been an attack for the last 45 <laughs> seconds. I, but hold on now. Let me, but that sucks. I don't want to attack. No, you're not. But let me ask I'm, you this. You know what it is? I'm bristling against the It's a the fascinating me. conversation. I'm bristling yeah. against the way it was for me, not yeah. the way it is for you. No, no, no. I, and I get it. And I, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't dare to say that there aren't the exact same components in my own relationship with alcohol it's and so wine addictive. more specifically. It's such an addictive substance. It really is. Yeah. And I, but here's, let me push back just a little bit. Is there room for that? Buddy. Let me, okay, I'll tell you something. I occasionally chew Nicorette, which is an addictive substance. Uh -huh. Nicotine. I do it when I write. Wow. Yeah. St it's a stimulant it's, for you. You've never smoked. Stimulant. Never you smoked. You have never smoked. Yeah, I've never smoked. Nicorette. And I'll chew. When did you get turned? Who, what crack dealer gave you your first piece of Nicorette? I put it together. I was like, when I smoke a cigar, I feel fantastic. Why? 
I go with, oh, nicotine. I'm going to Google what nicotine does. It's a mood elevator. It's a nootropic. Helps you focus. Why do so many people write while they smoke? I was like, well, I don't want any of the death. I'll just chew Nicorette. So I did. Smart. And here's, uh, well, there's actually, look, I can't vouch for these people. You got a stash of Nicorette in your house. Of course, in my drawer. Your drug drawer. And it's in a time lock <laughs> safe. I actually put You're it in a time a lock monkey. safe. I am. Well, I'm trying to join you. I'm saying in the height of really enjoying a piece of Nicorette while I'm writing, and it makes my, my fingers snap on the keys. Love I'm it. writing too much. I love it. Literally. I have to go back in a non-Nicorette state. Take it down. Yeah, edit. yeah. You're like, wow. But that's great. Wow. I'm like, look, I'm making all this marble. Wow. I know for a fact I really love Nicorette. Val was like, Pete, you wrote your whole book on nicotine. She's like, that's a nicotine book. And I was like, yeah, that's how you, people ask you, how do you write a book? I'm like, nicotine helps. I'm not saying that's the only thing that helps. You can also go for a walk beforehand, but it's a lot easier to just throw in a piece of nicorette. Uh, and when I'm in the throes of really enjoying these things that I'm addicted to, coffee and nicotine, I wouldn't say I'm addicted to nicotine, though, because I don't write every day, and I only chew it on days that I write, and that breaks down to about two days a week. You know who loves this whole speech? Tell me. Big nicotine. That's right. If Jesus... Uh, <laughs> Big Nick. Second Big miracle. Nick is up there just like, hey. Big Nick. Oh, Let's send Pete a uh, fruit basket. Eh? <laughs> Infused with nicotine. <laughs> send him some well, I've gone back and forth, too. I'll, I'll preach the other side of it, too. My thing with nicotine is keep it under four milligrams a day, which is barely one cigarette. So you're having barely any. And if I, it, and I only do it when I write. I have to be in my chair, final draft open, looking at a script that I'm resisting writing. And then I'll chew it. This and is if all... I'm at a party and I want a piece, if I'm in a plane and I'm grumpy and I want a piece, you don't get any. Because as soon as you take that little piece out of, the, out of the wall, the whole thing comes crumbling down and I go back to chewing 35 pieces a day and being a complete addict. But when I was addicted, and this goes back to what I've been trying to say to you, I go, what's the difference between being addicted to something and something just being incredible? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, hold up. You That's just how said, I feel about coffee. You said you go back to 35 pieces a day. Did you ever get to a point where you were oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. You I were, used to chew it constantly. You were crushing nicotine. Crushing it. Okay, okay. I shot the entire How We Roll pilot with a piece of nicotine in Nicorette in my mouth. Okay. Got, like, I was, got con- I did. And then when we got picked up, I quit because I was like, fuck this. So I've done that a couple times. And now I'm on the four milligrams or less a day. And I go days without it, without any. But that's, I, I looked up someone else that did this, this doctor, I forget his name. I found him through Andrew Huberman's podcast, but it was a guest. And he was talking about how he does it between four and eight only when he's writing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. But, but the point, believe it or not, of all that was to say that when you love, it's easier with coffee because nicotine's weird. But coffee, when I, you know what my last thought of the day is most days? Pretty excited for tomorrow's coffee. Yeah. And that is one of the great gifts of life. So I'm trying to join yeah, yeah, yeah. in brotherhood. I appreciate saying, it. Saying, yeah, alcohol is addictive. Uh, so yeah. is fat. So is sugar. Yeah. So is sex. So is a lot of things. The pleasure things. Yeah. Obviously not everybody's addicted to those things, but they can be addictive. Mm-hmm. So when you go, I can't wait to eat that steak and have that glass of red wine. If you can not have the bottle and then another bottle, which is what I would do. Uh, yeah. I can say, God love you. Yeah. For what it's worth. You I, don't I, need my stamp of approval, but I, I get it. I also draw the line at 35 pieces of nicotine gum. When it comes to <laughs> when it comes to alcohol, I'm I'm I have a I've been pretty fortunate. I feel like I have a pretty healthy uh I wouldn't say healthy. But I feel like I ha- know where the line is. Then that's and, that's healthy for you. We and I love I love having pops with people like I, it's it's so social for me like yeah. if i see somebody and they want to have a drink i'm at let's have a fucking drink i missed you i haven't seen you in fucking yeah months or years like let's, let's one of my favorite things i haven't gone through the program but they have that like it works till it doesn't thing till it doesn't yeah and i like that yeah because i because it's a denial to say that it doesn't sort of work you know what i mean have if you and i went out and had a drink we might go a little bit deeper yeah but then old homesy He's gonna go home. He's gonna keep drinking. <laughs> like it's it's an okay. issue. <laughs> yeah. See, I see, and this is something I re- recently, as as you know, I wish somebody would have told me about. Just fucking club so just switch to after you're done drinking booze, you just get home after party, just go to Lacroix, start drinking Lacroix. Yeah, you're getting the same thing. The same. It's all. Now but we're it's in just our the, 40s. It's the booze you don't need. Yeah, you don't need that booze. So I could have done that back yeah. in my twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't need the extra boots. You're just like, we got to go. We got to keep or it ends. It's all over. It's just like, shut up. You fucking need that. I completely God agree. God damn. I completely agree. Yeah. It's I really hard to do though, especially if you're, 
addicted to alcohol. Uh, addicted, to, <laughs> right? Okay, so then that's why I feel like I'm relatively in a good place, a place that yeah. I where I don't have to kind of like you know confront this yeah. with unnecessary self scrutiny because then that's just an exercise in like controlling. But you myself. love the weed smoke. There's a lot of references to weed smoke in your special. I and there was hmm? I smoke weed. I I smoke it uh, probably less than I drink, but. Okay. Um, like I'll smoke it. I like to smoke it when I golf. Oh. Yeah, I like to smoke it if I'm on like, whatever. It's it's more sparing. Than... I've just been trying to think of weed and golf puns, but yeah. <laughs> Four uh, twenty. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's I, alcohol <laughs> this, this is, is terrible. I'm gonna if I I'm gonna hit myself. Hold on, I have to hit okay. myself in the dick. We'll edit it out. No, no, no I have to hit myself well, in the dick. Well, then it's we the only keep way it I learn. <laughs> What? <laughs> I did hit my dick, not my balls. It didn't oh. hurt. I got a big old coiled up anaconda. That was totally fine. Good lord. JK. Just, no, you're not. JK. No, you're Middle not. Th- do I have BD? It's well. You I can't can, see. I can my see D. your hog. This isn't dick. It's weeping. This it's is just that's just pants. No, I'm not looking up there. I'm looking. Oh, I'm you're looking right. You, you I'm know looking where the, I know where to know look. I know zone. where to find it. The middle third. I know where an anaconda hides. Middle third. Uh, middle third of when my... you said middle third, I was like, that's kind of a big dick joke. Oh, I would because t- if you can spare a third, the middle third, of I would your bet the middle third of my still dick, have a workable ding dong. Well, it's just a, I mean, it's just a, another way to say chop my dick off. Yeah, no, I know. Trust, um, talking about that's a line from a special, but uh, oh, we live at the green mill available now on all things comedy. I, my wife would kill me if I quit drinking. That's interesting. Yep. Just because we, that's our favorite thing to do is just make a beautiful meal, have a bottle of wine. We don't even need to drink the whole thing. But if it's nice food, celebrate it with a glass of wine. I really, really, it means, that means a lot to us. We just enjoy it. And that's awesome. She married a good time. She married a good time. It's interesting. If I were your therapist, I'd say two things. One, <laughs> I find that very significant, what you just said. Yes. Two, isn't Nate a good time? Nate is a good time. It's, it. Nate is a good time. That's I, it's a joke. That's why it's a joke. No, I, you, but yeah. but it's it is it is it is it is pretty presumptuous, I guess. Yes. I wonder if that's true. I want you to ask your wife if that's true. Say, would you leave me if I quit drinking? Oh, we've talked about it. We talk about it a ton. <laughs> Who'd you marry, Captain Morgan? <laughs> no, maybe because Arr, if you be Arr. not sipping me rum. <laughs> You walk the plank, you find a boot that runs on sobriety. Maybe. Wait, you've talked with your wife and you were like, you'd leave me if I stopped drinking. No, and like, no, yes. no, no, no. That was not her oh, line. That's oh. mine. That's my quip. No, she is probably going to have to stop drinking for med school. Like we're, we've definitely talked about like definitely taking long breaks and if not quitting. And it's yeah. just like, well, we really do enjoy wine with uh, food. It's like, I don't know if I... If. Yeah. You know, if you were talking to Mario Batali, you'd be having such a better time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Look here. If I just had like a classy earring and I look like a Street Fighter boss and I'm just like, I okay. know, you gotta have the wine! What, like, it would what, be so much better. What good is my wife's pirate ship if we can't <laughs> blow holes in to the side of it? To your point, I am being more of a bummer. And if I, I, I don't like feeling this uptight. And I don't feel uptight, but no. I feel like I'm sounding uptight. No, no, no. I mean, without question, I, the... It takes a tremendous amount of work to, to be to quit drinking. I just from the people that I know that have done it, it's incredible. It's remarkable. It's a, it's a, admirable, and it is clearly a benefit to their careers. Oh, interesting! Um, across the board. I mean, like so. There's always that. Yeah. Um, I want to say something. I love you, and I love you i don't want you to change i think you're doing great this isn't this this has the flavor of like uh i can't wait to ask nate about his drinking i love you i love who you are thank you buddy i love you too and i don't want any any you walking out being like i feel like pete wants me to change x y no no no. i know i did just in case that's under there that's not what i'm getting that's not what's happening i know you're not i know that you have a cult and you're i can i can (laughs) I can join it if I want. I and know the that members they, of my cult all sneak out and have a few pops. They have some pops. And they come back and, I'm and they're here like, don't, for those weirdos. No, don't talk <laughs> to <laughs> old Holmesy. <laughs> yeah. Come, come see me in Austin.
and Ann Arbor and Chicago and, and all Cleveland. Out. And where are you playing in Chicago? Uh, the Lincoln Lodge. I'm doing a Lincoln Lodge Labor Day weekend, the first and second. Yeah. Have you been to the new lodge? There's a new lodge. They redid the lodge. It's fucking fantastic. Really? Dude. It's what it always w was Supposed growing to, to be. be. Yeah, dude. Not they a really... ceiling PA in a pancake nope, restaurant. They got it. It's they got three theater, three little spaces. One of the main rooms, a full on functioning, awesome room club. Perfect ceilings, perfect stage, perfect sound, perfect wow. aesthetic. And then they have like uh uh two fifty seaters, and it's dope. Really? Yeah, and they got people there, like tons of people. I mean, you know how comedy is now. It's not like it, when we started it, we were like the only dorks in town. Carney's juggling cabbages. <laughs> and then now it's like, it's like, it's a cool kid thing now. Oh, it's a, like a prudent investment. Fathers across the country are like, why couldn't you go into stand-up comedy? <laughs> Don't you care about your future? Put together a new hour. You're never going to make it if you don't make sense of it all. Sure, dabble in improv, but focus on the meat and potatoes. You can tour. CAA has a department for you. <laughs> There's no department in yes and. <laughs> the numbers are not in your favor. Sketch? Who are you going to get to read your sketch pilot? <laughs> you can't split $75 12 ways. <laughs> you take that 75 and you bank it. Enterprise gets 50 and the rest is for you. You do stand up. You keep all the cash and all the drink tickets. And you get to do it. As, here's my thing about improv v stand up is I never met an improv team that wanted to perform as much as I did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was like, we're just making it up. We should do shows every night. But it was too much production. Getting the word out, yeah. Getting a space, fucking sucks. Yeah, you stand up. It. If you want to do it all the time, you, you can do, do it, it yourself. All the time. Yeah, you don't have to ask anybody. And it, you can be as tenacious as you are. Instead of uh, improv teams are only as committed as the least committed person, right? Which is always just the guy who's there for the beer. Yeah. There Unfortunately, the, beer. the funniest guy in the group. Almost always. Always. But doesn't have that compulsion. Doesn't have the compulsion. And we're full circle. Doesn't want it. No work ethic. <sighs> Kim Kardashian never emptied a car vacuum bag. A lot of memorable lines. In Thank you, special. buddy. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, and then we'll we'll wrap it. We'll wrap it. Can you tell me a time in your life that you laughed so hard you were crying, laughing, your belly hurt, you fell over? Oh my God! Just like maybe the hardest laugh of your life. But it doesn't have to be the hardest laugh of your life. I have one. Talk about my 4th of July party. There was one with, there was a whole night with Kyle that was. Kinane. Yes, that was. He showed up late. He had hurt his leg or something. I hurt my leg. He, or it was I like his first him. bout with gout or something like that. Like gout? Kyle, he did for a while. You know, it's like Kyle. It's some Kyle he's shit. so perfect. Uncle Barbecue, dude. It's like, he's so he has gout. I love that guy. Dude, he just yeah. bought a house in Portland. It's great. And Kyle's crushing it. Kyle's, he moved to Portland? He did. He moved to Portland in the pandemic. And then, like, I think he just... Lives in Portland. He lives in Portland now. Wow. Just ripping it up there. The scene's great. So he, you know, it's all, it's all he needs. He That's did his, great. He did his six specials, you know? like he's, Wow. And he'll probably do more. He'll keep doing them. Yeah. But, like, he came over late, like, after the party. And, and I fed him a bunch of mushrooms. And we just, like shroomed out for the whole night and like he had his friends meet us there and they had been i think they came from different places so his friends his uh buddies from chicago were uh one of them was like completely tossed and then the other one ate mushrooms with us and he disappeared into the neighborhood so it was just this con into like the neighborhood it, it was just this i mean well i you know you've been to my house yeah. it was it's kind of a fun neighborhood especially yeah. on the fourth yeah it's disappearable yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean I it's understand. like it's like especially if you're on you didn't you know, lose him in like a stranger's thing no suburb. no he yeah. he went on a mission you know yeah. and uh and and so we just wind up like we were just sitting kind of way i don't know if we had hung out in a while or whatever and we were sitting and uh on like uh i want i don't want to name the guy's name but our a buddy of ours was had passed out on my couch and like we were out we were drinking there was a couple of us around my table in my yard there and he gets up and he comes out sleepwalking and um and takes his like takes his dick out towards us <laughs> and we're like how's where's this gonna and just heavy peas into my succulent plant like a long piss like an indoor uh an outdoor he was he was 
on my, at my doorway, uh. got off my couch, walked to the outside at least, thank God, and then pissed into my succulent plant. Sleep plane. pissed. Long, heavy sleep piss. Yeah. Like ropey. Ropey, you know, <laughs> heavy, nobody's watching, piss dick. <laughs> Right. <laughs> he had a nobody's like, watching piss dick. Nobody's watching heavy piss dick late night. Yeah. P you know, I'm alone. P my dick after dark. Yes. The way hermits Wham. piss. Just a, just a heavy hermit pee. You know, piss like nobody's watching is what is, is, all, is all we want for anybody. That's right. And I mean, he pissed like nobody was watching. And we were not only were we watching, we were all falling out of our chairs. I mean, we were just like, we could not, it was, it was in the middle of a conversation and he, it was like, we were just, we like tried to like talk to him because eyes open, eyes open sleepwalking and like not, uh, no eye contact with us. We were like, and just direct piss. And it, it took, you know, a nice long piss can take. Oh, sure. A 60, if can you're take a minute. Passed out you're passed out really, drinking all day. Yeah. I mean, that's a 60 second and we just, and so. So the so the laughter didn't start to stop until the piss ended. The laughter didn't start to stop until the piss. And ended. that's a long fucking laugh. That's a great dude. opening line to your book. Yeah. The laughter didn't stop until the piss stopped. Until the piss ended. The laughter didn't start, start to, to stop, stop until, until the, the piss, piss ended. ended. Yeah. And then another laugh that we had that <laughs> night, which was which at this point we had almost we almost threw up with the piss laugh. The another laugh. His so his, his drunk drunk friend was like puke drunk trying to gather himself like sitting in a and he like went off and sat back in the back by my back alley past the gate there mm. if you remember that and like and my neighbor gerald plays the trumpet all the time and he's like kind of self-taught trumpet player mm -hmm. and like we like we like were out looking for his friend and we came back and and we turned the corner to come into my courtyard and his buddy dom was like sitting there just like kind of leaning like but like you know trying not to vomit and like blackout drunk and like and my neighbor is trying to is a sweet man. He's a Buddhist. He like is like very much offering things to you. He a self-taught like, Buddhist, self-taught Buddhist Trump, Trump trumpet, trumpet player. player. And like he's like, Katie, do you ever meet him, Gerald? My neighbor, the black Gerald. Guy? Yeah, he's he was always there. He was always like he just always like he would grill chicken and shit for people. He would like always give people things and like he would if you would wanted to chant with him people would go into his house and like and like nam yo renge kyo like with them and like uh -huh. and like and he's the sweetest guy but he was playing the horn for dom and he he literally was playing a, a trumpet into dom's face it was like the last thing you would want if you were trying to if you were trying to not puke you know and it was just like and that's yeah. what we me and kyle should are a like, trumpet be cooling <laughs> no it wasn't it was like he it was just he just wanted to do something for this sick young man that was like at his house and to, trying to like, this guy just blaring a trumpet into his friend's face and we just again same night fantastic it's reminding me of your closer i won't do it but people have to listen to live at the green mill live at the green mill it's a great closer thank you buddy the story oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. true true story true story cop asked for a joke joke let me hear i want to hear a joke first Real prick. He what? meant it too. He, he, he but then, joke. and I was like, all right, well, then I'm going to mean this joke then. And then, and then, and he liked it and it worked. He liked it. And I bounced. I probably, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I was, I was, I mean, I was had I had one. I was glad I had one. I, you know, people ask you for a joke. I don't remember street jokes. So I'm like, yeah, yeah it's not how this works. I, I got, it's funny that I was clearly advocating stopping drinking, but I was a little stoned the other night. And I uh, told Val every street joke that I could remember, and we were laughing hard. It, there's a hole in the ground. These two hunters come upon it. There's a hole in the ground. And they're like, that's the deepest hole I've ever seen. How deep do you think that hole is? And they're like, I don't know. Throw that rock in. We'll see how long it takes to hit the bottom. They throw this rock in the hole. It takes forever. And then finally, poof, wow, that's the deepest hole I've ever seen. It took like 30 seconds. And out of nowhere, Faster than lightning, a goat comes charging between them, knocks them apart, goes headfirst directly into the hole, falls down. Like, what the fuck? A couple minutes pass, a farmer walks up. He goes, have you guys seen a goat? And they're like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. What, what do you mean? He's like, hey, he's got to be around here somewhere. I tied him to that rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. I shouldn't have said that rock, a rock.
Yeah, he's tied it to implied, a rock. Yeah, yeah. Implied the rock was still there. Can't mess with him. He's tied to a big rock. Yeah, you can't mess with him. I tied him to a big rock. Yeah. There you go. There it is. The end. How do you um, feel? I feel fantastic, buddy. It's really great to see you. It's great to see you. You should be really, really proud of your special. I Thank you, you bud. Dude, that means a lot. I love it because <clears throat> we've known each other for a long, long time, and uh, it's been awesome to watch you uh, this whole time. So um, even talking about comedy is just a real blast from the past and a real fucking gift, to be honest with you. Yeah, I love it. It does make it. It does make it, there's so many things about this business that are, like I said, distractions and like, you know, tedious and all that, but like sitting down with, with, uh, people you're fans of and people who, you know, work so hard to be so fucking hilarious is like, it's such a, it's nice to just be able to have any kind of understanding about, uh, it is at all. Yeah, I get it. It's very difficult and it's yeah. like, it's like. At this point in my career, I'm like, I'm so grateful to like get the fucking be at peace with like what it is about comedy that I like that is not just me fixing myself. Yeah, that yeah. like that's like it's, a, it's the beautiful part of it because it's there's yeah. two there's two there, there's a beautiful part of it. Yeah, there's a very beautiful part of it. It's like it hey, man, I I fucking had these thoughts that I want you to I would love for you yeah. to see these and thoughts. that you worked on to make other people delighted. It's very special. Yeah, and that's why I appreciated the work and the craft of it. And and you just did a really great job. You should be really proud of it. I am. I'm proud. Well, the green mill helped. That place is. I mean, it looks right. It does look great. And Are you the, standing behind the bar? I'm standing behind the bar. Yeah. Yeah. It was the obvious choice, yeah. and it also opens it up. It's like. Yeah. As opposed to just 180. Are know. there really bullet holes in the wall? Yeah. From Capone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they came for they came for that dude at yeah. that place. It came from everywhere, but like there's that there's a tunnel under that stage to get him out of there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. And the guys that shot it, uh, Hunter Connors Herm uh, and Jack Whaley are the uh, the director of photography, and then my guy whose crew came down to shoot it, and wow. um, they made it look fucking gorgeous. I was like, we're doing the green. I was like, have you ever been there? And I don't know if he had or not, but they scouted it, and they were like, this is gonna be great. Yeah, and it's it like was. it's such such a dope spot. I didn't want the green mill sign to be like to dominate. Also, yeah. I thought the bar was the best choice just for the sight lines. Yeah, but like also that it's way better in the background. I think it really, oh yeah, it really lends itself no, it to. I'm gonna be honest with you. My penis has hurt since I hit it. You hit your dick. Yeah. Well, do I you, thought it was Steve. Do you for even a remember the shitty joke you made? Yeah, four twenty. Okay. Well, good. Let your dick hurt, you <laughs> dumbass. You fucking corn bag. <laughs> Get those essential metals on you, you fucking corn bag. This discussion about comedy and life has been brought to you by Magic Mind. Oh, you you put the wrong cap on it. Look, a little a little black topped. It's because I put it up my butt. That's and right. lost track of all <laughs> cognitive function. <of> all... <laughs> <laughs> Would you say keep it crispy, Nate? This was so fun. I love talking with you. Can I promote? Can I promote my dates? Sure. Is that possible? Yeah, I do hate real to quick. do this. Go ahead. Fuck. Uh, fuck. 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 Austin, fuck, Texas, fuck, August eighteenth, nineteenth. Chicago, fuck, Illinois, fuck. September first and second. San Francisco at the Punchline, September twentieth. Uh, Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, September 29th and thirtieth. Hilarities in Cleveland, What's November. 16th through the 18th you were how awesome is that club it's great i'll be with bill on tour in october dad no i'm serious dad 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 i'll be uh, at Love the bill. majestic theater in madison wisconsin december 27th and then i'll be at the laughing tap for new year's eve weekend in milwaukee wisconsin <clears throat> and i might have another i got a few more coming so yeah it doesn't sound time to quit drinking with those days natecraig.com <laughs> it's never gonna happen <laughs> Alcohol Vegas is on the schedule a couple times. Yeah. That's Milwaukee. That's why I call Milwaukee. Oh, Alcohol Vegas. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, from Pete and myself and KT, please keep it crispy. <laughs> I love that. You did that so professionally. <laughs> that was awesome, man. You may win. You may win.